be perfectly honest, I really didn't feel like streaming today. Um, a little pinchy in the shorts still. Definitely, uh, definitely an injury from last night. No way around that. Yeah, that's super bummer. That's a fucking super bummer. Um, so, and, I'm um, dealing with some other stuff, too. I'm just, bear with me for a second. Hey, Bobby. Um, interesting. Okay. Fair enough. I'm just checking, um, I, I, I gotta get a new guy, right? Like, I gotta get a new guy. Um, constantly, you know, Kai has a guy for everything. Well, I'm looking for a new guy for something. Um... And, uh, it's always a, it's always a thing finding a new dude. All right. Uh, wait, 1,266, 2066, 2060. Oh, this one's fucking been around for ages, though. Holy shit. Thirty versus forty. What's shipping though? Hmm. This motherfucker, what what's the goddamn shipping on this? Oh, there it is. Jesus Christ. Okay, so fifteen five which is Okay, so hang on, hang on. I can do this. Bear with me guys. Sorry for doing this on air, but I, I just this is this is at the forefront of my brain. And if I don't do it, I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. So 4635 versus fifty forty seven, but it's twenty two it's two fifty versus three hundred. All right. Uh, um Cassidy necessary. Um, we're not going to discuss that, Crix. That's, that's not a thing. In fact, I'm going to, I'm just going to pull that comment. Um, that's not a Twitch thing. So we know. Feel free to ask me, but it's not a Twitch thing. Um, all right. Okay. All right. I think I I think I've I think I've chosen. It's okay, Crooks. We all make mistakes. All right. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. We're doing this. We're pulling the trigger on something here. <clears throat> that means I need to spin up some technologies. Passwords and encryption keys and shit like that. Import. Yep. Now, verify it. 
Okay. Okay, just double checking that. I'm gonna have to redo my math though on this. Oh. All right, let's see. So recipient is encrypted for. There we go. And then. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Just doing a thing here. I swear I'll pay you guys some attention here in a minute. Okay. Uh... Ooh, mouse is low. All right. God, I love that feature. How do is that? Interesting. So that works a different way here. All right, hang on. There resolution. Bear with me. I'm just trying to get a thing done. <sighs> really? Okay, so that didn't even clear. I wish I could walk you guys through what I'm doing and I wish I could show you. Right? Like that that why why is our world so fucking weird about certain things? That is just like, you know, no. Arbitrary rules. Arbitrary rules. Can't tell you guys I'm still a little pinchy in the shorts. I, I did injure myself last night. Um, that's definitely a thing. I'm going to have to take it easy. Um, there's a sore spot. Um, let's see. Okay, so capture that. Okay, do that.
but view the progress for that. All right, I'm gonna have to wait on that. Oops. Cool. No, no cupcake. I was just getting some shit done. Um. Oh, fuck. Hey, Rev. I don't know if Rev's here right now, but... Mm. Rev doing like a, a bead cross-stitch sort of thing. Fucking posted in shared content. Um. All right. So, oh God. So that's pending zero confirmations. Okay. Um, I just watched a Vice News piece about the Mexican street pharma drugs. They got 10 mig Xanax and it spiked it on the tester and scared the people saying it was more than they'd ever seen on their test. Jesus Christ. Dude, the black market is it, the black market kills people. Black markets get the black market kills people. It's peyote stitch. All right. When I tried to export it as an image, it came completely uninstalled itself. Jesus Christ. Um, who, who, who responded? Oh, is it a resolution? All right. They're gone, though. Thank you. I'm, I love it. It's great. Um, Ten minutes per transaction, I believe, is the time frame that I'm looking at. All right. Um, Good on you. All right. Well, let's hope this works. Let's hope this works. Oh, uh, I'm just tired today. I'm fucking worn out. I mean, it probably has something to do with the fact that I <clears throat> dosed myself a little bit. Trying to relax last night. Um, took a warm bath before I went to bed to soak everything and then put some hydrocortisone on it and woke up today and took a warm bath and put some neosporin and hydrocortisone on it and it's a bummer for like for bottoms when you catch an injury in that part of the world it's a huge fucking bummer um so no no tears per se but there's definitely like a an abrasion of some sort, right? There's some tenderness. Um, well, Crix, it'll, well, it'll happen tonight, just not in the way that, like, see, what was happening tonight is different than a lot of nights. Um, it, it, it's, you'll hear about it tomorrow. It, it's just, yeah, like, it will have to be modified, definitely, from the original plan. Nice, Rev. I look forward to seeing it. Um, but, yeah. Just, you know, it's part of the risk. It's part of the risk. It's like catching a, it's like catching a fucking, like, you know, a, a broken pinky or a, you know, a dislocated shoulder or a, a, tw a, 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 like a twisted ankle doing, like, other sports activities and stuff, right? It's just part of the accepted risk is what it is. Um, that doesn't make it any less of a fucking bummer, though, when it happens. Um, let's see. One confirmation. Cool. Um. Does that change? I didn't know if that address changes. Oh, so everybody see the, uh, sorry. 
You ever see the cop that got fired for shooting the nine-year-old girl in the head and trying to kill her dog? Fucking ridiculous. Marcus, I have champagne. Apologies about the ass. Um, Wichita, Kansas, the beginning of October. Hey, Zippy. Um, so, cops get a report that some dude has, like, a 33-year-old guy has put a gun in his mouth and choked a dog at his family home, right? Now, by the time the cops get there, they learn that the gun is no longer in play. They, this, is, this is known. This is a known factor. By the time they get there, the cops learn the gun is no longer in play. In fact, it's now upstairs under a pillow. He's downstairs. He's he's diff he's distanced from the firearm, right? Bunch of fucking cops swarm into the house, and instead of getting the, the woman and her four children to safety, they decide to go in guns a-blazing. And while the gover- uh, the governors, while the officers are attempting to retrieve the gun, a what is described as a mid-sized mixed breed dog charged at one of the officers. The officer pulls his service weapon and shot at the dog, missing it twice. The shot hits the floor and ricochets. Fragments of the bullet then strike a nine-year-old girl who is behind the shot, right? So either way, he's shooting in the direction of a nine-year-old girl who, by the way, is sitting next to her six-year-old brother. So either way, this cop is pointing his loaded firearm, finger on the trigger, and shoots in the direction of a nine-year-old girl and a six-year-old boy, right? It strikes the ground. Glazy, if this were you doing this, you'd be serving hard time. But instead, it's a fucking cop, so get over it. If you don't want to hear it, Glazy, fuck off. I'm in a mood today, Glazy. If you want to catch a band today, Glazy, today's the day to catch a band. Okay? This is just warning. This is just me fucking giving you fair play. Um, This dumb motherfucker shoots in the direction of a nine-year-old and six-year-old. Luckily, he hits the ground first because he's such a shit shot. Bullet fucking shoots up and hits her in the fucking head. The doctors at the hospital showed the mother the um, x-ray of exactly how close the free, three fragments of bullets that, he, uh, that they had to remove from her daughter's face came to blinding her. Yeah. Or worse... Because ocular tissue and the ocular cavity is really thin bone. The forehead, difficult to get through. The ocular cavity, very easy to puncture through. So, literally a matter of an inch or less difference. And she would have been blind and or dead. But luckily in this case, yes, she survived. Of course, she'll have a lifetime of trauma to probably deal with. But she survived. The brother did not get hit. And the dog is alive. The cop, on the other hand, has merely been fired. <laughs> Whereas everyone else would have charges filed. You and I would have been me immediately been put in some silver bracelets and taken down to the fucking station for at least processing and some questioning. The cop, on the other hand, 
you know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> former Wichita police officer who wounded a nine-year-old girl when he fired at her family's dog, quote, is immune for cr from criminal prosecution and can't be sued, a judge ruled. There you go. So... At least the, um, at least the fucking, uh, the, the d chief of police apparently called the mom, um, and the, uh, the, the, the chief of police's name, by the way, is F Gordon Ramsay. I'm not kidding you. The, the Wichita police chief is named police chief Gordon Ramsay. It's a real thing. It's a real fucking thing. The The police chief's name is Gordon Ramsay. Um, Gordon Ramsay called this mom um, and told her in a phone conversation that, quote, what he witnessed was not only morally wrong, but against all of their protocols and training. And the officer would be released from duty as a result. Like, he, he called to assure her, like, he can't do anything about the prosecution, that's not something he can change, but he did the, to the credit of the chief of police. He called the mom directly, apologized her, uh, apologized to her profusely for the behavior of his officers, and fire just shit can the cop. It's like, yeah, no, it was morally wrong. He literally said it was morally wrong, and it was against our protocols and training. So he's no longer with the service. I mean, you know, the DA is a piece of shit. The legal system's a piece of shit. Qualified immunity is shit. But, you know, you got to at least, like, this is, this is something, right? Like, look, it's not the solution we want. It's not the answer we want. But, you know, fuck, a police chief actually owning up to the problem that his officer caused and shit canning the guy on the spot, basically. That's a that's a huge fucking difference than what usually happens. You know, usually they come out and say shit like, well, the officer was clearly in fear for his life. He was concerned about the safety is him and his team. And this is, uh, you know, it followed with it fell within the protocols and guidelines that we set forth as an organization. And while there is an internal review, right, like he didn't do that. He called the fucking mom and said, holy shit, I'm sorry, he's gone, <laughs> right? Like, I'll take that as a win. I'll take that as a win. It's not the win we want. It's definitely not the war, but it's a battle. And I'll take a win in a battle any day of the week, right? Like, I'll, I'll take that. But, you know, the DA needs fucking <laughs> dealt with. The fucking, the entire, like, look, this is the issue here. It's at a Supreme Court and legislative issue. Um, well, with a with a sh zippy, he wasn't allowed to resign. He was fired outright, which is which is make it makes it a little more difficult. Usually, what they do is they let them resign, so it's not on their record that they shot a little girl in the face, and they they so the next town over can do the denied a deniable plaus a d uh, plausible deniability and lack of liability issue right this time they at least shit canned him again not the solution we want right like i know that i know that but in a world of shit right like take t take a small win when you can You want to see the only correct thing Thomas has ever said. He regularly bitches about qualified immunity. Clarence Thomas slams qualified immunity for college officials in First Amendment case. Uh. Where's his actual quote? Um. Ah, there it is. 
Justice Thomas took the opportunity to slam qualified immunity for standing on shaky ground as he noted the clearly established test cannot be located in subsection 1983's text, the federal law that authorizes civil rights lawsuits, and may have little basis in history. Moreover, as a one-size-fits-all doctrine, qualified immunity is an odd fit for many cases because the same test applies to officers who exercise a wide range of responsibilities and functions. Uh, why should university officers who have to t- uh, take t- uh, who have time to make calculated choices about enacting or enforcing unconstitutional policies receive the same protections as a police officer who makes split s- decisions to use force in dangerous settings? We've never offered a satisfactory explanation to this question. Instead, we've submitted our own policy preferences for the mandates of Congresses by uh, conjuring up blanket immunity and then failed to justify our enacted policy. But since the parties did not raise or brief these specific issues below, Thomas agreed the Supreme Court could not take the case. I... <sighs> okay, three confirmations. Let's check it. Oh, yeah. See that um that shit Austria did? Three dollars and fifty cents go anywhere public transport tickets. They supposedly did it in the name of like fighting climate change and shit. But like either way. Um Okay, cool. Recognized and confirming. Um Yeah, like, that's, I mean, that's a really fucking good deal. I mean, Austria is the size of, like, the Eastwood Mall, but imagine if the U.S. did that. Imagine if we did that. Do you understand what that would do to our our transportation sector? Do you understand what that would do to, like, the public sector in this country? If we literally mandated public public transportation methodologies... $3.50 $3.50 go anywhere. Imagine if we nationalized an airline at the same time. All right? All those airlines we keep bailing out every five fucking years, it seems like. All those fucking airlines that we constantly bail out and we constantly give subsidies to and that we constantly fucking give tax breaks to. Next time they come crying to us with a handout, it's like, yeah, you know what? We're buying you. We're buying you out. Here's here's your fucking bailout. It's in the form of ownership. You're now publicly owned. And we're mandating a $3.50 go-anywhere public transportation. Greyhound, you're on the list too. Fucking Amtrak, Greyhound, and fucking, I don't know, pick a American Airlines. Perfect fit, right? Perfect fucking fit. American Airlines, congratulations. You're now American Airlines. Right? Like you work for America now. $3.50. Plane, bus, train. Do you have any concept of what that would do to this fucking country? Like, it would revolutionize our economy. Right? Like, it would change everything. It would change the face of America. That would be fundamentally revolutionary to how this country operates. Oh, and there's a lot of people leaving backwater shitholes too, by the way. Cassidy, Cassidy, do not let, do not let fucking perfection be the enemy of the good. Don't let perfection be the enemy of the good, Cassidy. See, this is the problem with leftists. The first thing you did was, but what about the last mile rural areas? Well, what about them? Can we fix the first issue first? (laughs) Right? Like, let's get to it. Greyhound can cover that shit. Right? Like, I'm pretty sure Greyhound's got that covered. Right? Like, you got bus depots in your part of the world? Phoenix would finally die, I'm sure. Like... Right? Like, I, 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 
that would that would change the face of America. There, the, the, the population demographical shifts, the demographical shifts. Uh, 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 who's covering? It? I mean, Greyhound probably, Cassidy. That's that's that would be my guess. If we truly did that, if we nationalized, um, if we nationalized American Airlines and Greyhound, Greyhound could cover the last mile. Rev, 50 miles is still like, right? It, Rev, could you cover that 50 miles? Could you get to that Greyhound bus station? If you could get to that, if you could get that 50 miles, then $3.50, go anywhere. Right? Like that would be... Yeah, we'd lose money. We'd lose money, right? Like this would be this would be the constant like, oh, the post office doesn't make money. Yeah, dummy. It's not supposed to. The military doesn't make money either. They're a fucking giant money sink. It's just a fucking pit of it's a burning pit that we throw cash into constantly. Nobody complains that they're not making money for the public. Right? Like the post office is supposed to be that way prior to the fucking dummy Republicans in the Trump administration getting their hands on it. Fucking these dumb fuck morons need to turn a profit. No, it doesn't. That's the whole point of public services, you fucking morons. It would never make money. But that's not the point. <clears throat> Yeah, they cost money, right? Like, I, I put $3.50 for a go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, Aka, the fucking prepaid fucking retirement crap. Sleep. I mean, you put me in fucking charge of this shit, I would. I, I would. Like, that's, too, that's a great idea. I, I fucking... I'm just doing some quick math. Let's, uh, let's just say it's enough to cover some administrative costs. I was wondering whether we should just do it for free. You could make the post office the pickup point. Well, <clears throat> yeah, when you wouldn't even need to build excess. Like you could, you could, you already have the property. Just build a fucking thing on the back. For twos. I'm not opposed. Let's just put it that way. Oh, Jesus Christ. Zippy, I just saw that link. Yeah, the, the shit that would do to this nation. Actual freedom of movement. Right? <clears throat> Imagine. And you know what? I know people say like, oh, well, if you did the airlines, you wouldn't need, but I think you would need all three. Like, look, I think there's room and net need for all three forms of transportation. Right? Like bus, train, and plane. These are the public transportation methods. We already have Amtrak. All we need is American Airlines and Greyhound. Just nationalize them both. Buy them. Buy them outright. What's the fucking market cap on Greyhound? They just got bought anyway. Oh my god. Are you shitting me? Rye, yes, Rye, apparently. Flix Mobility, a German transportation company, bought Greyhound for, wait for it, 
$140 million plus $32 million to be paid over 18 months. That's, that's literally shit we would find in a fucking couch, like behind a couch cushion in this country. It's literally pocket change to us. 2,400 destinations in North America, 16 million passengers each year is what Greyhound covers. And we could have bought it for the public for $172 million. That's literally nothing in this country. Under 200 million. Holy shit, man. All right, let me check. Hold on. Hold on, we're doing this now. We're doing this. I want to find I want to know how much this would cost us. Okay, so they're worth more. Oh God, your page is useless. Just, just, some, just, just fucking tell me outright. Just tell me the number I need to work with. Okay. So. For about $12.6 billion, we could buy, an, we could have our own national airline service, bus service, and we already have the train service. $13 billion. You You understand that's, that's like a fifth? of the administrative cost associated with administering the um, student loans in America. It's nothing. $13 billion. We could have a national airline service and a fucking a train, a bus and a train service. It probably cost it cost us, you know, a few billion every year to run it because I'm not running it at the cost at the price point it runs. Yeah, go ahead and ask. Um, but like still thirteen billion up front and let's just say twenty billion every two to five years. Hell, even twenty billion every year. What's twenty billion to like have a truly public transportation system? It's nothing. It's nothing. Uh, bye bye. Let's say I think it's a hundred and fifty-eight million, something like that. It's a hundred and twenty-six bucks in taxpayer money every year. If you're, if you're, if you're paying taxes, right? Imagine paying $126 a year for full access to a public flight, train, and bus transportation system that may cost you 
let's say $10 a ticket to go anywhere in this nation. Major hubs, of course. We can't get you to small, like, like airports and shit like that, probably using a system like that. But buses and end of mile will address later, right? 126 bucks in taxes if you're in the taxpayer bracket that would be covering that sort of thing. And we'd also segment it out in, you know, stratified um, taxing system. And then maybe, let's just say, $10 a ticket. This is just doable. God, we suck. God, we fucking suck. Do you guys think Margaret Thatcher effectively utilized girl power by funneling money into illegal paramilitary death squads in Northern Ireland? Yes. Ah, who do you ask it of? I want to talk about the Spice Girls. I want to talk about the Spice Girls. I was just speaking to Jerry before I arrived here. Is that one of oh that's that 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 that's the bitch from fucking um um big fat show uh like whatever the fuck that 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 panel show they do um that's that one which Spice Girl was she she was such a bitch on that show um big fat quiz of something. Two thousand and fourteen, Mel B. Big fat quiz of the year, big fat quiz of the decade, big fat quiz of the yeah, um Mel B was the one. I don't know if that's the one, but Mel B was the one who was on the show that I just remember I'm like, man, she was a bitch. Everybody was like, Jesus Christ, man. All right, not a good look for her. Really good look for everybody else though. Big fat quiz of the year, yeah. It's a good show. It's a good show. Um, but yeah, 2014 apparently is the one. And like, yeah, that's that's fucking Richard uh, Iowate fucking just ta- just takes the piss out of her. That I remember. Yeah, fucking Mel B. Yeah, she didn't get it. She didn't get it. Like, I remember watching that episode. She didn't get it. Like, she legitimately didn't understand that they were there for comedy. And she just, like, was above it all. And such a twat about it. That, yeah, everybody started taking the piss out of her. Um... All right, let me, hang on. Yeah, close that. Now minimize. Oh, well, Angie, I want, I want, fuck, I want 13 billion to buy American Airlines and Greyhound. 13 billion. I can get us a national airline and a national bus service. We already have the train service. I want 13 billion. It may cost us twenty billion to run it every year. I don't fucking know, but it, it the estimate that it costs us twenty billion every year to run. It's one hundred and twenty six dollars to the taxpayers across the board, uh, like even distribution. So if we segmented it to the you know, higher earning tax brackets, they'd be paying more. People at the lower end would be paying less, and then estimate ten dollars per ticket go anywhere. Anywhere American Airlines currently serves as a hub or as a destination. We we keep, right? Give me thirteen billion to buy a fucking airline and a bus service, and then give me twenty billion to operate it. 
and then we can for the for the cost of effectively the effective cost of 130 bucks per every tax paying american but it wouldn't be that way it would end up costing you your tax bracket something like 12 bucks a year right and then 10 dollar tickets what would that fucking do to this world what would that do to the face of the economy in the US what would that do to all these shitty employers out there Right? Like, think of all these shitty fucking just hellhole towns where the only employer is a fucking coal mine. And you've got some fucking like a high school graduate who's just languishing in that town because moving to someplace better costs a shit ton of money and they don't want to risk it. Well, now it costs 10 fucking bucks to go to anywhere in this country. Oh, yeah. It changes the worker, uh, the employer-employee dynamic. It changes... No, Peaky, it wouldn't. It wouldn't cover the cost. Just like a 42-cent stamp doesn't cover the cost of moving your letter from point A to point B. But that's not the point, is it? Public services aren't supposed to cover the cost. They're supposed to cover the service. Right? Like, nobody talks about the military not making money. Right? It's a fucking fire pit we toss cash into constantly, right? So. I need 13 billion and then 20 billion operating per annum. And we can have a national airline service and a national bus service, and then we already have a national train service. Right? Like. You shitting me? Yeah, people in this country would see more of this country too. Yeah. That would that would revolutionize America. It would revolutionize America. It would displace so much bullshit. Just like that. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Easier to keep your base when your base can't afford to leave. Yup. Do you know how many fucking shitty ghost towns there would be? Do you know how many fucking these shitholes would turn into ghost towns overnight? Just overnight. Dude. Paducah, Kentucky. This is this is one of the best things Joe Rogan has ever said in his entire fucking career, right? Paducah, Kentucky doesn't have people in it because Paducah, Kentucky's the shit. Paducah, Kentucky has people in it because Paducah, Kentucky's people, uh, people's ancestors were headed west and they got fucking tired and said, here's good enough and pfft, there's a kid. Why well, how why a lot how a lot of these fucking shitholes exist, y'all. Your fucking ancestors got lazy and stopped there. They didn't continue on to the place that was actually fucking cool. Cassidy. A lot of inner city flight. A lot of inner city flight. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking weather. I'll get right on that. I'll get right on that weather for sure. There would be a lot of inner city flight. Yeah. Which one's the Minarch? I don't care. I, maybe Rye on bread. Uh, on, rye, uh, on rye bread. Uh, at resolution. Hey, Kaz. Thanks, Ancestors, for making the extra trek. Um, hey, Kaz. How was your stream? Fucking transfer. Jesus Christ. Um... I mean... 
It's kind of fucking cringe. Jesus. Why? <laughs> that's, that's, that's my only question. Why? Hey, brain dead. Hey, Dan. Um, so they confirmed? They confirmed? Cool. Um, give me one sec, y'all. I'm gonna finish up what I was doing at the start of this stream. And then, you know, one of these days behind the scenes, I'll tell y'all what the fuck I was actually doing. Um, okay. So I need to select a couple of options here. I need to select a bunch of options actually to find what I was after. Um, rating. And it helps if you spell things correctly. Fun fact, kids, it helps if you spell things correctly. <laughs> Come on. Fucking load. I'll leave it be. <sighs> I would be curious, are the people, are the members of the LGB Alliance in Britain actually like lesbian, gay, or bisexual? Or is it just a bunch of angry fucking like cisgendered straights using it as a political cover? Like the ANCAPs use anarchists for cover. I don't know it. I don't, all I know is that they've got their reputation of being turf. Like, and beyond that, like, I don't, I don't know much about them. A second wave feminists, really? Huh? That's weird. Usually, they're the halfway decent ones. It's usually the third waves that get problematic, shall we say? I mean, I get it. I, don't get me wrong, but I mean, like, there's, there's, there's a gay, um, there's a gay, a gay male, um, part like a uh, campground in Michigan or Wisconsin that the dudes would go to to. I mean, let's face it, they're going there to fucking have sex, right, out in the woods. There's hot tubs. There's there's saunas. There's a lake. Um, and they go out there to just, you know, bang. It's, you know, a bunch of dads and boys, right? They fucking, the dude, the older dudes bring their younger dudes and they trade them around and they fucking have a good old time, right? And a few years back, um, trans men started showing up and like the, the gay dudes were like, um... No. Right? Like, no. <laughs> like, we, it's not that we don't want to see you as people. It's not that we don't see you as equal human beings. But we're here for a very specific reason and not most of us aren't down. So they made it a private membership club. Um, which it is perfectly legal in the United States to discriminate uh, within a, pi uh, per a private membership club. Racial, um, ba based on race, sex, religion, it doesn't matter. Private membership clubs are allowed to discriminate in America. Um, if you want a whites-only club, you can make that happen. Um, so yeah, they went private membership club, and I get it. I get it. Um, that is a thing in this country. Um, did this, this just fucking, this just crapped out on me again. Right? Like, seriously? 
no, no, I don't want to do that. I want, I want a new circuit. Give me a new circuit. Uh, the KKK got sued out of existence for all intents and purposes. The IKA sort of came up in their stead. Uh, the International Clans of America. They were more the SMG machine gun in the woods type clan member. Um, and then there's a few others. Later, Rai. Uh, did that? Okay. So it looks like that fucking took. Maybe. Yeah, I just had to establish a new circuit. All right, cool. Uh, young conservative constitutional conservative on Twitch. The future of the conservative movement on Twitch. Change my mind. Oh my God. Imagine unironically using a Steven Crowder line. Um, Kez, I, you know, I don't really, I don't really care. If, if you, if y'all, if y'all tell me, like, this is the thing. If y'all tell me the fucking LGB alliance in Britain is a bunch of pieces of shit. All right. I'm good enough. Right? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't need the details unless I have to interact with them. If I have to interact with any of these idiots, then yeah, I'm going to need details. But beyond that, all I need to know is like, oh, okay, they're fucking trans exclusionary and they're fucking, they use it as a fucking cudgel to like beat people with and shit like that. Right? <coughs> cool. Cool. Right? Like they're getting in the way of people's rights. They're getting the way, getting in the way of people living their lives as they see fit. All right. I get it. Later, Dan. <laughs> Dan, yeah, time to go to bed, man. Time to go to bed. All right, like that's I don't I don't need details. Um All right. So, let me do this again. Um, try this, try this a second time. Um, okay. Yes. That's who I am encrypting it for. Yes. All right. All right, Tiger. Tiger yells. You know what? I'm in a mood. Oh, tell you what. Let me get done what I'm doing behind the scenes right now. You want to have a conversation? We'll have a conversation. Just let me finish up what I'm doing.
Well, that I've already got four and a half hours on a playlist. So if you want to stick around for that, by all means. But it's going to be a bit before I get to reading that theory. Um, we can direct you to the playlist, though. We just covered last night why ANCAPs are in favor of slavery. How, how, le uh, how right libertarianism and um, so-called anarcho-capitalists uh, are actually philosophically in favor of slavery. And how all they do is couch their terminology in, uh, they couch their uh, beliefs and ideologies and philosophies in, in um, separate terminology. They just hide the slavery term. Nice, Karina. Um, do uh, Karina, Karina, if you're here right now, I'll fucking trade you one. There you go. Uh, tip for tat, Karina. There you go. Uh. I um, injured myself last night. I've got a sore spot from last night's activities. Um, so I'm going to have to take it easy, which is a super bummer. Um, I mean, you know, I was making progress. Like I was making progress, getting depth. Um, but you know, yeah. Imagine an eight-year-old buying heroin with Bitcoin. That's ANCAPs in a nutshell. No, no, no addicted to mosh. No, it's, no, Zippy, you missed DGen story time last night, and you can, um, you can find it on the playlist for YouTube now, um, Zippy. There is a playlist for that. Um, addicted to mosh, it's imagine an eight-year-old buying heroin with Bitcoin to reduce his pains from working in the Amazon owned company uh, company mine all right there you go that's fucking and caps in a nutshell <laughs> yeah exactly me too yep definitely um if you do exclamation DST on uh, on discord I just did it in the Commons. Um, you'll get the playlist for DJ and story time. If you do exclamation fuck and caps, you'll get the um, no and caps aren't anarchist playlist. In discord brain dead in discord. I haven't transferred it over to Twitch yet. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot the forgot the mine part. Clearly my fault. Yes. Yes. Um, you know what? I'll do that right now. I'll fucking do that right now. Why not? Let me let me get the command structure and then I'll fucking copy it. Um Where are my custom commands? There we are. All right. And then this will go under links as a, as a subset group. Um, all right, you can try that one. You can try the fuck and caps one. That should be live now on uh, on Twitch. And. So is DST. Um, 
You know what? I'm going to change that command, though. Fuck and caps. Edit it. I don't want the, the line break. There we go. <sighs> All right. Yeah, the music was shit, Karina. Uh, music. Um. Cool. All right. So am I done with this window? I'm done with this window. I'm done with these windows. Quit. Close it. Done. Um, Twelve thirty. All right. Yeah, the fucking the injuries bumming me out a little bit. To be perfectly honest, I'm tired today anyway, um, and I got shit to do tonight. And my plans for tonight have to change because of fucking the injury. And. I'm just hoping, like, by the weekend, it will be healed. That way, by next Tuesday, I'll be good to go again. But, you know, these sorts of things you kind of have to keep an eye on. It's not a tear. I've checked. But it definitely is, like, a, an irritation. And in that part of the world, irritations don't, like, you know, go away easily. So, we'll see. Like, a tear can take months. Um, but part of the risks associated. All right. Um, anyway. All right. So. Did that person want to talk? Did, or are they gone already? I don't know. I just, you know, I, I got done what I needed to get done. Finally. I started the stream doing it and then finally managed to get it done. Fucking. Oh, Rev, a fucking ligament may never, ever heal. Yeah, like ligaments can potentially just need surgical intervention, plain and simple. Yeah. Tendons and ligaments. Cowardly Chad? Mm. I, you know, uh, uh, well, we got chapter two done last night. Who would have guessed the minarchist ran away? Um, we got chapter two done. What's the, the intro to chapter three look like? Yeah. And then chapter, what's oh, 3.1, 3.2. You know what? That's doable in a single run. I think we could do this tonight. I think we could get chapter three done. I don't know if my voice will hold out for it because reading is a whole fucking thing. But. Oh. Oh. Right, it's automatic. You're in charge of it.
Um, All right. Oh, I was actually thinking about. Um, give me a second. Let me try and I want to. I want to create a new button. Um. Why would I? When did they add this shit? Hmm. Set from file. Must have been in the last update of Stream Deck. Um, AV. Okay. Now, um, source that one, um, full face. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Cool. We're going to use that for DGen story time. And I'm going to get it a little off the screen just to have a little less clutter. Um, you're welcome, Craigs. Um, All right. It's a few pages. We're probably going to do about. This is probably going to be about an hour worth of reading, maybe in total. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what it looks like. But I think we can get through chapter three today. Chapter 3 technically only has three sections. 3.0, 3.1, and 3.2. So, <clears throat> I think we can get this done today. Night, Kaz. See, you do theory reading and people start leaving. I'm telling you. Um, taking down these and caps is killing my channel. <laughs> um, all right. Where is it? There it is. Oh, and I have to, God damn it. I have to do all the stuff. I have to do all the disables. You know what? Hang on. Is there a general for this? Nope. I have to do them individually every time. All right. Give me a second. Um, disabled. There you go. All right. All right. <clears throat> Alerts off. Um, you know what? I should even... I'm going to close the Lee Oren board as well, just in case. 
I think that's probably best. All right. That way nobody can trigger any songs or anything. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Even I'm, even I'm fucking. I just have to get this out of my system beforehand. Fucking and caps making me do all this extra goddamn work. I swear to fucking God. This is, this is, this is just, just, this is their fault. This is their fucking fault that I have to do all this extra work and put all this shit down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The world in fucking blah, 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 blah. The amount of fucking work you have to do to refute bullshit in this world. Bunch of fucking wannabe slave owning feudalist lords picturing themselves in their fucking manor on the hill. And then they come into a fucking anarchist camp. I'm like, oh, we're anarchists too because we hate government. Fucking these douchebags making me fucking read 12 hours of goddamn fucking theory just because people don't know how to refute their bullshit on a daily basis. And now I got to put this shit out there so people have it, even though it's already out there in text form. But text form, not everybody can learn. There's fucking disabilities. There's fucking dyslexia and shit like that out there. And plus people, you know, can easy, more easily fucking listen to it in the background. So now I got to fucking put in the labor. I swear to fucking God, these goddamn fuck Fucking and caps. All right. <clears throat> Helps me get up some energy for the for the read too. Tell me about it, fucking public. Tell me about it. Uh, yeah, basically. But like I said, we already got like four and a half hours of it. I'm just starting chapter three. We already got four and a half fucking hours. I'm just starting chapter three. There's going to, there's going to be fucking a bunch on this YouTube playlist, but at least it will be on a playlist. What's worse, tankies or ANCAPs? <sighs> Tankies have killed more people in the name of their bullshit. They've, they've, tankies have killed more ANCAPs. Uh, t t tankies have killed more an uh, anarchists um, than any other, like, in-group. But the ANCAPs are more insidious because they do everything in the name of anarchists. At least with the tankies, they're waving a fucking communist flag and they're mowing you down with a fucking tank, right? Like you get you understand who the fuck did this to you. With ancaps, these crazy fuckers go out there and f align with like boogaloo boys and proud boys and alt writers and shit. And the meanwhile, when people ask them who the fuck did this, anarchists did it. No, they didn't. It's a bunch of fucking libertarian prickhead feudalists that are fucking rocking a goddamn Hawaiian shirt and shooting up a, a fucking store trying to start a second civil war and a fucking race riot, right? Like, so, <sighs> direct danger, tankies are worse. But the more insidious thing and the problematic to the anarchist milieu as a whole are the ANCAPs. There you go. All right, let me tighten this screen a little bit. <laughs> or the opposite of what I was trying to do, Windows. Thank you. Oh, I'm sure she is public. We've, dude, <clears throat> you know, that's what a hundred years of propaganda will do to somebody. Um, oh yeah, here, as usual, um, putting the link in chat, if somebody comes in and asks, 
where uh, what I'm reading from. Somebody please share that link with them so I don't have to fucking deal with it. Also, if somebody's talking at me or asking me questions, please and thank you. Somebody reply to them telling them what's up. I will take breaks in between the sections and come back. Uh, don't be afraid to fucking chat or whatever and use the chat while I'm while I'm reading. You know, you don't have to just sit there silently listening, though. I mean, if you want to sit there silently listening, listening, no shame whatsoever either. Um, public, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. <clears throat> Chapter 3. Why do so-called anarcho-capitalists place little or no value on equality? Murray Rothbard argues that the rightist libertarian is not opposed to inequality. You see this direct quotation in Fern New Liberty, page 47. In contrast, leftist libertarians oppose inequality because it has harmful effects on individual liberty. Part of the reason so-called anarcho-capitalism places literal no, little or no value on equality derived from their definition of that term. Murray Rothbard defines equality as A and B are equal if they are identical to each other with respect to a given attribute. There is one and only one way, then in which any two people can really be equal in the fullest sense. They must be identical in all their attributes. He then points out the obvious fact that men are not uniform. The species, mankind, is uniquely characterized by a high degree of variety, diversity, differentiation, in short, inequality. Egalitarianism is a revolt against nature and other essays, page 4 and 5. In other words, every individual is unique, something no egalitarian has ever denied. On the basis of this insight, he concludes that equality is impossible except for equality of rights and that the attempt to achieve equality is a revolt against nature, as if any anarchist has ever advocated such a notion of equality as being identical. And so, because we are all unique, the outcome of our actions will not be identical, and so social inequality flows from natural differences and not due to the economic system we live under. Inequality of endowment implies inequality of outcome, and so social inequality. As individual differences are a fact of nature, attempts to create a society based on equality, making everyone identical in terms of possessions and so forth, is impossible and unnatural. Before continuing, I should note that Rothbard is destroying language to make his point. Rothbard often argued in bad faith, and he's not the first to abuse language in this particular way. In George Orwell's 1984, the expression, all men are created equal, could be translated into newspeak, but it would make, uh, but it would make as much sense as saying, all men have red hair. An obvious falsehood. See the principle of newspeak in the appendix of this document. It's nice to know that Mr. Libertarian is stealing ideas from Big Brother, and for the same reason, to make critical thought impossible by restricting the meaning of words. Equality, in the context of political discussion, does not mean identical. It usually means equality of rights, respect, worth, power, and so forth. It does not imply treating everyone identically. For example, expecting an 80-year-old man to do the identical work to an 18-year-old 18, 18 violates treating both with respect as unique individuals. For anarchists, as Alexander Berkman writes, quote, equality does not mean an equal amount, but equal opportunity. Do not make the mistake of identi identifying equality and liberty with the forced equality of the convict camp. True anarchist equality implies freedom, not quantity. It does not mean that everyone must eat, drink, or wear the same things, do the same work, or live in the same manner. Far from it. The very reverse, in fact. Individuals' needs and tastes differ as appetites differ. It is equal opportunity to satisfy them that constitutes true equality. Far from leveling, such equality opens the door for the greatest possible variety of activity and development. 
For human character is diverse, and only the repression of this free diversity results in leveling, in uniformity and sameness. Free opportunity and acting out your individuality means development of natural dissimilarities and variations. Life in freedom, in anarchy, will do more than liberate man merely from his present political and economic bondage. That will be the only the first step, the preliminary to a truly human existence. The ABCs of Anarchism, page 25. Thus, anarchists reject the Rothbardian newspeak definition of equality as meaningless within political discussion. No two people are identical, and so imposing identical equality between them would mean treating them as unequals, i.e. not having equal worth or giving them equal respect as befits them as human beings and fellow unique individuals. So, what should we make of Rothbard's claim? It's tempting just to quote Rousseau when he argued, it is useless to inquire whether there is any essential connection between the two inequalities, social and natural, for this would be only asking, in other words, whether those who command are necessarily better than those who obey. And if strength of body or of mind, wisdom or virtue are always found in particular individuals in proportion to their power or wealth, a question fit perhaps to be discussed by slaves in the hearing of their masters, but highly unbecoming to reasonable and free men in search of the truth. Social Contract and Discourses, page 49. But a few points should probably be raised along the way. The uniqueness of individuals has always existed, but for the vast majority of human history, we've lived in very egalitarian societies. If social inequality did indeed flow from natural inequalities, then all societies would be marked by it. This is not the case. Indeed, taking a relatively recent example, many visitors to the early United States noted its egalitarian nature, something that soon changed with the rise of wage labor and industrial capitalism. A rise dependent upon state action, you should note, this implies that the society we live in, its rights framework, the social relationships it generates, and so forth, has a more, far more uh, of a decisive impact on inequality than individual differences. Thus, certain rights frameworks will tend to magnify natural inequalities, assuming that that is the source of the initial inequality, rather than, say, violence and force. Or as Noam Chomsky argues, Presumably, it is the case that in our real world, some combination of attributes is conducive to success in response to the demands of the economic system. One might suppose that some mixture of avarice, selfishness, lack of concern for others, aggressiveness, and similar characteristics play a part in getting ahead in capitalism. Whatever the correct collection of attributes may be, we may ask what follows from the fact, if it is a fact, that some partially inherited combination of attributes tends to material success. After all that follows is a comment on our, our particular social and economic arrangements. <clears throat> the, egalitarian might, uh, the egalitarian might respond in all such cases that the social order should be changed so that the collection of attributes that tends to bring success no longer do so. So perhaps... If we change society, <clears throat> so perhaps if we change society, then the social inequalities we see today would disappear. It is more than probable that natural differences has been long ago been replaced with social inequalities, especially inequalities of property, which tend to increase rather than decrease um, inequality. As will be argued in Section 8, these inequalities of property were initially the result of force, not differences in ability. Thus, to claim that social inequality flows from natural differences is false, as most social inequality has actually flown from violence and force. This initial inequality has been magnified by the framework of capitalist property rights, and so the inequality within capitalism is far more dependent upon, say, the existence of wage labor rather than natural differences between individuals. If we look at capitalism... We see that in the workplaces, in workplaces and across industries, many, if not most, unique individuals receive identical wages for identical work. Although this is often not the case for women and members of the black community and other marginalized community members who receive less wages than their, let's say, male, white, suburban counterparts. 
Similarly, cap capitalists have deliberately introduced wage inequalities and hierarchies for no other reason than to divide and so rule the workforce. Thus, if we assume egalitarianism is a revolt against nature, then much of the capitalist economic life is in such a revolt. And when it is not, the natural inequalities have been imposed artificially by those in power. Thus, natural differences do not necessarily result in inequality as such. Given a different social system, these so-called natural differences would be encouraged and celebrated far wider than they are under capitalism. Hierarchy ensures the crushing of individuality rather than its encouragement, without any change in social equality whatsoever. The claim, the claim that natural differences generate social inequalities is, que is a question begging in the extreme. It takes the rights framework of society as a given and ignores the initial source of inequality in property and power. Indeed, inequality of outcome or reward is more likely to be influenced by social conditions rather than individual differences, as would be the case in a society based on wage labor or other forms of exploitation. Another reason for so-called anarcho-capitalists' lack of concern for equality is that they think that liberty upsets patterns. You can see chapter 2, section 5, for example. It's argued that equality can only be maintained by restricting individual freedom to make exchanges or by taxation of income. However, what this argument fails to acknowledge is that inequality also restricts individual freedom. We'll cover more of this in the next section. And that the capitalist property rights framework is not the only one possible. <clears throat> After all, money is power, and inequalities in terms of power easily result in restrictions of liberty and the transformation of the majority into order takers rather than free producers. In other words, once a certain level of inequality is reached, property does not promote but actually conflicts with the ends which render private property legitimate. Moreover, Nozick, in his Liberty Upsets Patterns argument, quote, has produced an argument for unrestricted private property using unrestricted private property, and thus he begs the question he tries to answer. Andrew Curahan, Capitalism and Self-Ownership, from Capitalism, page 71. For example, a worker employed by a capitalist cannot freely exchange the machines or raw materials they have been provided with to use, but Nozick does not class this distribution as of restricted property rights as an infringing liberty, nor does he argue that wage slavery itself restricts freedom, of course. So, in response to the claim that equality could only be maintained by continuously interfering with people's lives, anarchists would say that the inequalities produced by capitalist property rights also involve extensive and continuous interference with people's lives. After all, as Bob Black notes, your foreman or supervisor gives you more or less orders in a week than the policemen do in a decade. Never mind the other effects of inequality such as stress, ill health, and so on. You can see more on this in Libertarian is Conservative. Thus, claims the that equality involves infringing liberty ignores the fact that inequality also infringes liberty. A reorganization of society could effectively minimize inequalities by eliminating the major source of such inequalities, wage labor, by self-management. We have no desire to restrict free exchanges. After all, most anarchists desire to see the gift economy be become a reality sooner or later. But we would argue that free exchanges need not involve the unrestricted property rights that Nozick and many other right libertarians and so-called anarcho-capitalists assume. As we argued in section two and will continue to do in section, uh, in chapter two and continue to do in the next section, inequality can easily lead to the situation where self-ownership is used to justify its own negation. And so unrestricted property rights may undermine the meaningful self-determination what anarchists would usually call freedom rather than self-ownership, which many people intuitively understand by the term self-ownership. Thus, for anarchists, the so-called anarcho-capitalist opposition to equality misses the point and is extremely question-begging. 
Anarchists do not desire to make humanity identical, which would be impossible in a total denial of liberty and equality, but to make the social relationships between individuals in power equal. In other words, they desire a situation where people interact together without institutionalized power or hierarchy and are influenced by each other naturally in proportion to how the individual differences between social equals are applicable in a given context. To quote Michel Bakunin, the greatest intelligence would not be equal to a comprehension of the whole. Thence results the necessity of the division and association of labor. I receive and I give, such as human life. Each directs and is directed in his turn. Therefore, there is no fixed and constant authority, but a continual exchange of mutual, temporary, and above all, voluntary authority and subordination. God in the State, page 33. Such an environment can only exist within self-managed associations. For capitalism, wage labor creates very specific relationships and institutions of authority. It's for this reason anarchists are socialists, by and large, opposed to wage labor, the existence of a proletariat or working class, the reduction of private me uh, means of production. In other words, anarchists support equality precisely because... We recognize that everyone is unique. If we're serious about equality of rights or equality of freedom, then conditions must be such that people can enjoy these rights and liberties. If we assume the right to develop one's capacities to the fullest, for example, then inequality of resources and so power within society destroys that right simply because people do not have the means to freely exercise their capacities. They're subject to the authority of the boss, for example, during work hours and sometimes outside work hours. So in direct contrast to anarchism, right libertarianism and these so-called anarcho-capitalists are unconcerned about any form of, in, uh, of equality except equality of rights. This blinds them to the realities of life in particular, the impact of economic and social power on individuals within society and the social relationships of domination they create. Individuals may be equal before the law and in rights, but they may not be free due to the influence of social inequality, the relationships it creates, and how it affects the law and the ability of the oppressed to use it. Because of this, all anarchists insist that equality is essential for freedom, especially including those in the individualist anarchist tradition. The so-called anarcho-capitalist tries to co-opt these. Spooner and Godwin insist that inequality corrupts freedom. Their anarchism is directed as much against inequality as against tyranny. And while sympathetic to Spooner's individualist anarchism, they, Rothbard and Friedman in this instance is who Newman is referring to, fail to notice or conveniently overlook its egalitarian implications. Liberalism at wit's end, Stephen L. Newman, page 74 and 76. Why equality is important is discussed more fully in the next section, but here... Let's just stress that without social equality, individual freedom is so restricted that it becomes a mockery, essentially limiting freedom of the majority to choosing which employer will govern them rather than being free within and outside of work. Of course, by defining equality in such a restrictive manner, Rothbard's own ideology is proved to be nonsense. As L.A. Rollins notes, libertarianism the advocacy of free society in which people enjoy equal freedom and equal rights is actually a specific form of egalitarianism. As such, libertarian itself is, uh, libertarianism itself is a revolt against nature. If people by their very biological nature are unequal in all attributes necessary to achieving and preserving freedom and rights, then there is no way that people can enjoy equal freedom or equal rights. If a free society is conceived as a society of equal freedom, then there ain't no such thing as a free society. The Myth of Natural Law, page 36. Under capitalism, freedom is a commodity like everything else. The more money you have, the greater your freedom. 
equal freedom in the new speak Rothbardian and Capistanian sense cannot exist. As for equality before the law, it's clear that such a hope is always dashed against the rocks of wealth and market power. Again, we'll touch on this. As far as rights go, of course, both the rich and the poor have an equal right to sleep under a bridge, assuming the bridge owner agrees, of course. But the owner of the bridge and the homeless have different rights. And so they cannot be said to have equal rights in the new speak Rothbardian sense either. Needless to say, poor and rich will not equally use the right to sleep under a bridge either. Bob Black observes in The Libertarian as Conservative that the time of your life is the one commodity you can sell but never buy back. Murray Rothbard thinks egalitarianism is a revolt against nature, but his day is 24 hours long, just like everybody else's. By twisting the language of political debate, the vast differences in power in capitalist society can be blamed not on an unjust and authoritarian system, but on biology. Sound familiar? Hmm. We're all unique individuals, after all. Unlike genes, although biotechnology corporations are working on that too, human society can be changed by the individuals who comprise it to reflect the basic features we all share in common, our humanity, our ability to think and feel, and our need for freedom. Tell me that bitch didn't record. Okay, I can see in chat where Make Echoes fucking started the recording. Echo duration has started. I can see where it fucking said record. It's recording. There we go. Now it fucking did it. I'm going to have to fucking, I'm going to have to go in and trim out that end, I bet. I bet it didn't fucking, dude, their bot is lagging as shit. All right, hang on. I need to file a ticket with these assholes. What okay, ticket man. with He's these dying, likely? Uh, no, no, right now, now I, 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 Let me see the clip. I'm going to download the clip right this second. I want to see what the clip looks like. I'm going to see what it looks like right this second. Yep. Give me the manager. Uh. They're gonna try to get up on the wall. They're gonna try to get up on the wall. Yeah. I also recognize that everyone's at worst feature on their website. Okay. Download complete. Let me see it. Uh, 3.0. There you go. Put on biology. Sound familiar? Human society can be changed by the individuals who comprise it to reflect the basic features we all share in common, our humanity, our ability to think. It not only stopped, it stopped before I pushed the button. Which begs the question, or individuality. I'm 
having a day, y'all. I'm having a day. I'm having a day. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Cassie, it's just fucking, why do I pay for a service so I can do it at the push of a button to add extra steps to my workflow? Right? Like, yeah, of course I can download the fucking thing and clip it and put it in fucking VOD bullshit like I did yesterday with the fucking DGen story time because the fucking make echoes didn't record yesterday either. Right? Like, what's the fucking point of paying for a fucking product if it, you know, doesn't fucking work? Oh, I'm not redoing it. That's not a thing I would do. <sighs> I thought he still had it. Why, why, why would you, I want nothing to do with your stupid fucking homepage where other, uh,
Email sent. I, I, right, Karina, put it, put it in the fucking bad movie night. Um, I'm, I'm not putting trailers in this, this episode. I'm not dealing with the YouTube copyright strikes and shit like that on this episode. Um, okay. So it's 3.2 that's short. It's 3.1 that's longer. All right. Just with the tech, just work. It's all I want. Well, all I, well, what I want, what I really want is the fact that my ass hurts. That's, that's, that's really what's got me in a fucking tizzy today. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking annoyed that I might be sidelined. I'm fucking annoyed. I have to change my plans for tonight. I'm fucking annoyed. I'm just annoyed. That's, that's, that's what's going on. I know what's going on. I'm pissed. Um, (sighs) ah. All right. <clears throat> How long is one point three point one? Jesus Christ, three point one is long. Three point one is long, y'all. Three point two is short, and then we're done with chapter three. Um, <laughs> I had to, I had to look up the, the fucking frog's tail portion of that zippy. Um, it was such a good night. It was such a good night marred by an, by an injury, right? Like it was such a good night for those of you who were here for DJ and story time last night, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. It was such a good night marred by a fucking injury that could sideline me. I'm fucking pissed. I'm pissed. I it just I'm reminded of the reason that the 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 Jewish milieu, the Jewish community has with a lot of their like Passover dinner and that sort of thing, they always have a bitter herb. They always have something that's that's just sour and bitter and nasty, right? To remind them to remind cult, like generations of people to pass that knowledge down, to ingrain it into their communal knowledge knowledge base, that life will always have that bitterness to it. There's no getting away from it. You have to embrace it. You have to learn to enjoy it. You have to learn to tolerate it and deal with it. it there's a lot. Do one of these days I'm going to go to fucking like synagogue. I, I, there's a lot about the Jewish faith that I admire. Like, I, I think that amount of suffering <laughs> does something to a people, right? Like, I, I, there's something about that amount of suffering and oppression and just hardship that, like, just just understands that on, like, a very, very real level. 
right? Like this is, I think you just became a Buddhist. No, like it, it, this is, this is more than Buddhism, right? Like this is, this is, yeah. Oh, Buddhism fucking there's suffering in the world. And the, but the, the Jewish people, like they fucking, they grab that fucking suffering by the balls and they're like, yeah, come right in. Come on. Let's fucking do this. You know, the, the, the Buddhists are, you know, it, it does. Yeah. It breeds clarity. In some sense, it makes them funny. Right. Like there's, I really admire the, 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 like the Jewish milieu of, with how they, they handle this sort of thing. Um, I know it's about suffering, but it's how they contend can contextualize the suffering. Look, I can discuss Buddhism. I can discuss Taoism. Fuck, I can discuss Zoroastrianism. I can discuss Masahana Darism, which you would probably know as Buddhism. I can discuss Abrahamic religions at length as well. We do theological discussions on a fairly regular basis on this channel, but it, it's the contextualization and how they handle that suffering or how they go about handling that suffering. That is that is markedly different between the the Jewish faith and the Buddhist practices, shall we say? Um, I've had more than one dream where I lose faith in atheism and turn to Judaism, and I've always ended up with a Jewish wife too. So I think my brain is more focused than I thought. Um, yes, but relig which religion is right? Taoism. Taoism is right. Taoism. That's, that's always my answer. It's not a religion. So it's even, it's, 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 it's truth, right? Like th this is, this is the best, which religion is the best religion? The one that's not a religion. Taoism. I, 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 I think that's the best answer. Um, Jewish people suffering happens. Buddhism, you suffer because you want stuff, so stop wanting stuff. Yeah, like the Jewish people are like, yeah, shit happens. Let's deal with it. Let's learn to deal with it. Yeah, you know, that, that's, that, that's, that's, dude, that, that, that sound that is so common with, within the, like, the Jewish milieu that, yeah, yeah, well, you know, what, what are you, what are you, uh, what are you going to do? That is so telling of the psychology Right? Like, if you understand what that sound is about, right? Like, it's, it's almost like the Indian head wobble, right? Yes, no, maybe so, non-committal, committal sort of thing, right? Like, it's, it's in that territory of it's this transcendent action. Yeah. I do. I, I've, I've got a real soft spot for the, for the Jewish faith and the Jewish people. That like something about that amount of like suffering does shit to somebody and you do it in mass like that. And it did, it did some weird shit to him. And I, I, I'm there for it. I get it. I mean, I get it. All of the philosophy, zero calorie. Like what else do you expect? You know? Yeah. It's, um, Jesus was a Jew. That is correct. It's my father with everything. Eh, we'll see. You know, yeah. Times are good. Eh, we'll see. Times are terrible. Eh, we'll see. I respect it. I do. Beat you to it. No, tech support. Um, <laughs> ref. Um, I want to get this done. And basically, yeah, it does, actually. Um, I love that um, it's not Taoist, but I love that parable about the, the, the thief and the monk. It's uh, That one always sticks in my head. It doesn't relate to this moment. Um, oh, it's, it, it's D-A-O, Matic. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, T-A-O. It's T-A-O. 
the the DAO is fucking obnoxious. It's TAO. It's Dao De Ching. T A O D Ching. T E E. Right? Um I got like I want to get through chapter three, Zippy, if I can. I want to get through chapter three. I want to try and bang it out. Chapter section one, there's only three, three point one and three point two. Right? Um, 3.2 is short. It's like yay long. Um, yeah, it's duh, 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 duh. It's, um, and, and the, 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 duh, like duh, duh, duh. Um, it's, it's the intrinsic nature of something. It's, it's a tree is the best at being a tree. Right? Like it's, 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 yeah, there's, there's a lot encapsulated in the Tao Te Ching. Um, yeah, that parable about the thief and the monk always just, I love that parable. Um, the monk, um, the monk is out from his house one night and, oh, it's uh fucking 11 sections with like somewhere between three, it, somewhere between one and a, like nine sections per chapter. So there's like, there's 11 chapters. We're, we're maybe going to complete three tonight. It's going to be 50 to 65 hours of reading. Um, the, the monk is out one night, um, from his, from his house collecting water from the stream. It doesn't matter. Like you, you, to how you tell it. And he comes back and while he's, while he's gone, a thief breaks into his house and starts rummaging through the monk's possessions and there's very few possessions there. And when he comes back, he attempts to rob the monk. The monk says, I have very little to give you, but you're welcome to whatever you, you want and begins to take his robes off and hands him the robes. Right. And the thief takes what he can and slips into the, the moonlit night and the monk just glances at the moon and glances at the thief and says to himself, I sure wish I could have given him the moon too. <laughs> I... All right. So. I love that parable. I really do. All right. How many pages? One, two, three, four. Jesus. <sighs> All right, section section one is long, y'all. It's long. Section two is a chunk of a paragraph in like one, two, three, four. So two normal size paragraphs and then a fucking chunk of a paragraph. But section one is like legitimately four pages long. So... Oh, I know that, that syndrome, Rev. I know that syndrome. <clears throat> no, Marcus, I'm not that type of person. I'm not that type of person, Marcus. My brain has decided it wants to do this. There's, there's very little that could be said or done at this point to stop me so yeah <clears throat> I 
All right, here we go. <sighs> Blue Band Group. Oh, really fun to see with the Blue Man Group, dude. I'm telling you. All right. <laughs> Tech support. Um, Marcus. <clears throat> Blue Band Group is a fantastic show. It really is. It's a fucking century experience. It's kind of cheesy, but it's a fucking century experience. I, I, If you get a chance to see a Blue Man Group show, see it. It's fucking cool as shit, man. It's kind of corny, but I mean, at the end of the day, go fucking no way, shape or form. Would I ever recommend you do anything illegal? Check the lo laws of your locality. And again, this is not a recommendation and this is not an instruction, but you know, all I'm saying is if you happen to fucking like find yourself in possession of some psychedelics, low dose, and you find your way into a blue man group show, you're probably going to ha have a really interesting night. Yeah, Cassie, they're fucking great. It's fucking great. Blue Man Group is a great show. Tech support, they are. They're they're built differently. Western Dallas are different. I'd like to count myself amongst their ranks, but I, I'm just a terrible Dallast. I mean, most people just can't fucking handle a high dose, Korean, that's all. Uh, I've heard Cirque du Soleil can uh, give you a bad trip. Cirque du Soleil, depending on which show you see, Zumanity's fucking weird as shit, man. Zumanity's weird as shit. Um, but a lot of their shows are really good, though. <clears throat> uh, Corey, I'm, I'm, I'm. Remember what I said last night, Corey? I woke up. It's injured. It's not torn, but it's hurting. It's, it's sore, which is depressing me. Um, and then I'm just sort of annoyed today because I had a really good night last night and a really good fucking night. And I hate that it's, it's, it's marred by a fucking potentially sidelining injury, right? Like I just have to wait. I have just to wait. I have to wait and see, right? Like I just have to heal, but I'm, 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 I'm annoyed by that. Yeah. I'm fucking pissed. <clears throat> so that's what's going on psychologically. And I'm having to do a bunch of fucking theory reading because ANCAPs don't won't pull their fucking heads out of their asses. So, like, yeah, that's that's also a thing. Right? Limited play minutes list. Yeah, basically, it's off limits right now at all. Like, bruh, I'm off the bench. Like, I'm on the bench right now. Right, like that's, that's, you can't, you can't do limited play time. Like it's, it's just off. You're on the fucking bench, man. Don't do it. You'll fuck it. You'll just make it worse. So. That's serotonin rebound. No, nah, it's not. Beast. I've already implemented that regimen. <laughs> Marcus, it's not not. The fact that this motherfucker's out there teaching people bullshit, spreading fucking propaganda, spreading bad faith argumentation means I got to fucking put some shit out too. Only mine's going to be backed up by actual theory. Mine's going to be backed up by some scientific processes as well. We're going to use some empiricism. We're going to use some actual philosophy. 
rather than fucking Rothbard and Hoppe and fucking von uh, von Mises is bullshit. Literal anti-empiricism. No, no, Rev, because I don't watch any of that shit. I don't watch any of that shit. You guys post it for each other, basically. There's no fucking way. Y'all put a fucking video up of fucking ANCAPs or HAS or any of these dumb motherfuckers out there. I do not watch it. It's for my own sanity. I can't be, I can't, I can't. Yeah, I fucking can't. Well, welcome, Caboose. We're partway through fucking stuff, and I'm in a mood today, so. Wait, pure reason based on my personal preference and desire is in science? Yeah. yeah. Ugh, all right. Ugh. <sighs> uh. No, Caboose. We had one, but he ran out like a fucking coward, of course. Um, all right. Long ass fucking section. This is a long fucking section. No, Zippy. Chapter 3, Section 1. Why is this disregard for equality important? Simply because a disregard for equality soon ends with liberty for the majority being negated in many important ways. Most so-called anarcho-capitalists and right libertarians deny or at best ignore market power. Rothbard, for example, claims that economic power does not even exist. What people call economic power is, quote, simply the right under freedom to refuse to make an exchange. Ethics of Liberty, page 222. And so the concept is meaningless. However, the fact that there are substantial power centers in society, and so are the source of hierarchical power and authoritarian social relations, which are not the state, the central fallacy of so-called anarcho-capitalism is the unstated assumption that the various actors within an economy have relatively equal power. This assumption has been noted by many readers of their works. For example, Peter Marshall notes that so-called anarcho-capitalists like Murray Rothbard assume individuals would have equal bargaining power in a capitalist market-based society. See Demanding the Impossible, page 46. George Walford also makes this clear in his comments on David Friedman's The Machinery of Freedom. Quote, the, ca- the private ownership envisages by, uh, envisaged by the anarcho-capitalists would be very different from that which we know. It's hardly going to say far uh, say far to uh, it's hardly going too far to say that while the one is nasty, the other would be nice. In anarcho-capitalism, there would be no national insurance, no social security, no national health service, and not even anything corresponding to the poor laws. There would be no public safety nets at all. It would be a rigorously competitive society, work, beg, or die. But as one reads on, learning that each individual would have to buy personally all goods and services needed, not only for food, clothing, and shelter, but also education, medicine, sanitation, justice, police, all forms of security and insurance, even permission to use the streets for these also would be privately owned. As one reads about all this, a curious feature emerges. Everybody always has enough money to buy all these things. There are no public casual wards or hospitals or hospices, but neither is there anybody dying in the streets. There's no public educational system, but no uneducated children. No public police service, but nobody unable to buy the services of an efficient security firm. No public law, but nobody unable to buy the use of private legal system. 
Neither is there anybody able to buy much more than anybody else. No person or group possesses economic power over others. No explanation is offered. The anarcho-capitalists simply take it for granted that in their favored society, although it possesses no machinery for restraining competition, for this would need to exercise authority over competitors, and it is an anarcho-capitalist society, competition would not be carried to the point where anybody actually suffered from it, while proclaiming their system to be a competitive one, in which private interest rules unchecked. They show it as operating as a cooperative one, in which no person or group profits at the cost of another. See on the capitalist anarchists. This assumption of relative equality comes to the fore in Murray Rothbard's homesteading concept of property, which will be discussed more in Chapter 4, Section 1. Homesteading paints a picture of individuals and families doing into the wilderness to going into the wilderness to make a home for themselves, fighting against the elements and so forth. It does not invoke the idea of transnational corporations employing tens of thousands of people or a population without land, resources, uh, and selling their labor to others. Indeed, Rothbard argues the economic power does not exist, at least under capitalism. As we saw in Chapter 2, Section 1, he does make highly illogical exceptions, of course. Similarly, David Friedman's example of a pro-death penalty and anti-death penalty defense firm comes into an agreement. More on this in Chapter 6, Section 3. Assumes that the firms have equal bargaining power and resources. If not, then the bargaining process would be very one-sided, and the smaller company would think twice before taking on the larger one in battle. The likely outcome, if they cannot come to an agreement on this issue, and so compromise. However, the right libertarian denial of market power is unsurprising. The necessity, not the redundancy of equality, is required if the inherent problems of contract are not to become too obvious. If some individuals are assumed to have significantly more power than others, and if they are always self-interested, then a contract that creates equal partners is impossible. The pact will establish an association of masters and servants. Needless to say, the strong will present the contract as being to the advantage of both. The strong no longer have to labor and become rich, i.e. even stronger, and the weak receive an income and so do not starve. If freedom is considered as a function of ownership, then it, it is very clear that individuals lacking property outside of their own body, of course, lose effective control over their own person and labor, which was, let's not forget, the basis of their equal natural rights. When one's bargaining power is weak, which is typically the case in the labor market, exchanges tend to magnify inequalities of wealth and power over time rather than working towards equalization. In other words, contract need not replace power if the bargaining position and wealth of the would-be contractors are not equal. For if the bargainers had equal power, it's doubtful they would agree to sell control of their liberty or time to another. This means that power and market are not antithetical terms. While in an abstract sense, all market relations are voluntary in practice. This is not the case within a capitalist market. For example, a large company has a comparative advantage over small ones in communities which will definitively shape the outcome of any contract. For example, a large company or rich person will have access to more funds and so stretch out litigations and strikes until their opponent's resources are exhausted or if a local company is polluting the environment, the local community may put up with the damage caused out of fear that the industry, which it depends upon, would relocate to another area. If members of the community did sue, then the company would be merely exercising its property rights when it threatened to move to another location. In such circumstances, the community would freely consent to its conditions or face massive economic and social disruption. And similarly, 
the landlord's agents who threatened to discharge agricultural workers and tenants who failed to vote the reactionary ticket in the 1936 Spanish election were just exercising their legitimate property rights when they threatened working people and their families with economic uncertainty and distress. You see more about that in Murray Bookchin's The Spanish Anarchist, page 260. If we take the labor market, it is clear that the buyers and sellers of labor power are rarely on an equal footing. If they were, then capitalism would soon go into crisis. <laughs> More on that in chapter 10, section 2. In fact, competition, quote, in labor markets is typically skewed in favor of employers. It is a buyer's market. And in a buyer's, it is the sellers who compromise. Julia B. Shore, The Overworked American, page 129. Thus, the ability to refuse an exchange weights most heavily on one class than another, and so ensures that free exchange works to ensure domination, and so exploitation of one party by the other. Inequality in the market ensures that the decisions of the majority of within it are shaped in accordance with the needs of the powerful, not the needs of the all. It was for this reason that individualist anarchist J.K. Ingalls opposed Henry George's proposal of nationalizing the land. Ingalls was well aware that the rich could outbid the poor for leases on the land, and so the dispossession of the working class would continue. The market, therefore, does not end power or unfreedom. They are still there, but in different forms. And for an exchange to be truly voluntary, both parties must have equal power to accept, reject, or influence its terms. Unfortunately, these conditions are rarely met in the labor market or within the capitalist market in general. Thus, Rothbard's argument that economic power does not exist fails to acknowledge that the rich can outbid the poor for resources and that a corporation generally has greater ability to refuse a contract with an individual union or community than vice versa and that the impact of such a refusal is such that it will encourage the others to involve to compromise far sooner. In such circumstances, formerly free individuals will have to consent to be unfree in order to survive. As Max Stirner pointed out, in 1840, free competition is not free because I lack the things for competition. The ego on its own, page 262. Due to this basic inequality of wealth of things, we find that under the regime of the com a commonality, the laborers always fall in the hands of the uh, uh, possessors, of the capitalists. Therefore, the laborers cannot realize on his labor to the extent of the value that it has for the customer. You go on its own page 115. It's interesting to note that even Stirner recognizes that capitalism results in exploitation. And we may add that value the laborer does not realize goes into the, uh, into the hands of the capitalists who invested in more things and which consolidates and increases their advantage in free competition. To quote Stephen L. Newman, Another disquieting aspect of the libertarian's refusal to acknowledge power in the market is their failure to confront the tension between freedom and autonomy. Wage labor under capitalism is, of course, formerly free labor. No one is forced to work at gunpoint. Economic circumstances, however, often have the effect of force. It compels the relatively poor to accept work under conditions dictated by owners and managers. The individual worker retains freedom, i.e. negative liberty, but loses autonomy, positive liberty. Liberalism at wit's end, page 122 and 123. As an aside, we should probably point out that the full Sterner quote cited above is, in fact, quote, Under the regime of the commonality, the laborers always fall into the hands of the possessors, of those who have at their disposal some bit of the state domains, and everything possessable in state domain belongs to the state and is only a fief of the individual, especially money and land of the capitalists, therefore. The laborer cannot realize on his labor to the extent of the value that it has for the customer. It could be argued that we're misrepresenting Sterner by truncating the quote, but I feel that it's that such a claim of this is incorrect. 
It's clear from his book that Stirner is considering the minimal state, the state as is a commoner state. It protects man according to whether the rights entrusted to him by the state are enjoyed and managed in accordance with the will that is laws of the state. The state looks on indifferently as one grows poor and the others rich, unruffled by this alteration as individuals they are equal before its face. Page 115 and 252 out of the ego in its own. As these so-called anarcho-capitalists consider their system to be one of rights and laws, particularly property rights, we feel that it's fair to generalize Stirner's comments into capitalism as such as opposed to minimum state capitalism. If we replace state by libertarian law code, you see what it's meant. So this has been included as an aside before any right libertarians claim that this is a misrepresentation of Stirner's argument. Now, if you consider equality before law, it's obvious that this also has limitations in a materially unequal society. Brian Morris noted that for Ayn Rand, quote, under capitalism, politics, state, and economics, capitalism are separated. This, of course, is pure ideology, for Rand's justification of the state is that it protects private property. That is, it supports and upholds the economic power of capitalists by coercive means. Ecology and Anarchism, page 189. The same can be said of so-called anarcho-capitalism and its protection agencies and general libertarian law code. If within a society a few own all the resources and the majority are dispossessed, then any law code which protects private property automatically empowers the owning class. Workers will always be initiating force if they act against the code, and so equality before law reinforces inequality of power and wealth. This means that a system of property rights protects the liberties of some people in a way which gives them an unacceptable degree of power over others. And this cannot be met merely by reaffirming the rights in question. We have to assess the relative importance of various kinds of liberty and other values we hold dear. Therefore, Right libertarian, uh, libertarians disagree for a uh, disregard for equality is important because it allows so-called anarcho-capitalism to ignore many important restrictions of freedom in society. In addition, it allows them to brush over the negative effects of their system by painting an unreal picture of capitalist society without vast extremes of wealth and power. Indeed, they often construe capitalist society in terms of an ideal, namely artisan production, that is really pre-capitalist and whose social basis has been eroded by capitalist development. Inequality shapes the decisions we have available and what ones we make. Carol Pateman in The Sexual Contract said, an incentive is always available in conditions of substantial social inequality that ensure that the weak enter into a contract. When social inequality prevails, sec questions arise about what counts as voluntary entry into a contract. Men and women are now juridically uh, <laughs> free and equal citizens, but in une unequal social conditions. The possibility cannot be ruled out that some or many contracts create relationships that bear uncomfortable resemblances to a slave contract. Page 62. This ideological confusion of right libertarianism can also be seen from their position to ta opposition to taxation. On the one hand, they argue that taxation is wrong because it takes money from those who earn it and gives it to the poor. On the other hand, free market capitalism is assumed to be a more equal society. If taxation takes from the rich and gives to the poor, how will so-called anarcho-capitalism be more egalitarian? That equalization mechanism would be gone. Of course, it could be claimed that all great riches are purely the result of state intervention, skewing the free market. But that places all their rags-to-riches stories in a strained position now as well, doesn't it? Thus, we have a problem. Either we have relative equality, or we do not. Either we have riches, and so market power, or we do not. And it's clear from the likes of Rothbard, so-called anarcho-capitalism will not be without its millionaires, and billionaires, and possibly trillionaires. 
There is, after all, apparently nothing unlibertarian about organization, hierarchy, wage work, granting of funds by libertarian uh, riches, and a libertarian party. And so we're left with market power and so extensive unfreedom. Thus, for an, for an ideology that denounces egalitarianism as a revolt against nature, it's pretty funny that they paid a picture of so-called anarcho-capitalism as a society of relative equals. In other words, their propaganda is based on something that has never existed, never will, namely an egalitarian capitalist society. Oh, section one down. So what do we got in chat? What do we got in chat? I saw the globalist. I saw somebody say globalist. Always a good time when somebody fucking rolls out the, the globalist. You can't even spell capitalist correctly. Hey, Versa. Not these days, Glazy. Not these days. It's like seeing somebody wave an American flag behind their truck and shit, Glazy. You just immediately see it and you're like, eh, probably racist. <laughs> Big Bear, I kind of do. I kind of do. Like, I don't understand how people don't inherently get this. I don't, I don't understand how people don't get this. The logical end conclusion for, uh, for these f fucking so-called and caps, right? They're neo-feudalists. Everybody can see that, can't you? Like, can't you? How can anybody miss that? The end conclusion of their, uh, of their ideological spectrum, the, the reducto ad absurdum version of it, is literally Elon Musk running company towns on Mars in which they can shut off your oxygen flow if you do not comply with your, your manager's orders. That is literally the end result. And so having to delve into the ideological and philosophical depths of von Mises and Hayek and Locke, and Rothbard, and Nozick, and Hoppe, all of these godforsaken fucking anti-empiricist, anti-scientific method, anti-human, anti-egalitarian princi fucking principles and ideas and thoughts put forth by these just horrid human beings who literally justified slavery and in the cases of like Locke owned stock in slave owning and slave managing companies, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little mind numbing. It's a little, it just, your, your brain at a certain point, you're like, dude, how, do, why do I need to read what's going to amount to like 50 hours of theory? Probably it's going to be 35 to 50 hours of theory that I'm going to need to narrate because it needs to be put onto a fucking YouTube playlist so people can actually just sit down and listen to this shit because they don't want to read it. Nobody wants to fucking read it anymore. And I get it for a variety of reasons, but, you know, yeah. Yeah, it annoys me to a certain degree. It numbs my brain. I go a little fucking cross-eyed. Yeah, oh yeah, Adam Smith, dude, they don't even understand their own shit. Conservatives don't understand Burke. Capitalists don't understand Smith. 
It's fucking ridiculous. Swede complains about it all the time. He'll fucking talk about the labor theory of value at like literal finance conventions and people go, isn't that, fu- isn't that Karl Marx? He's like, it's Adam Smith, you dumb fuck. Where, don't you have an ec- economics degree? Right? Like he's talking to somebody who works in high finance and he's like, you don't understand capitalism. What is wrong with you people? It's ridiculous at the end of the day. Oh, did somebody roll out natural law? Oh, God. Are we doing spirit science or hermetics? Yeah, Rev. Like, which one? I, I want to check before I answer. answer. Um, I want to check. I'm pretty sure I know who, but I want to make sure. Yeah, okay. Just wanted to make sure. It's Smith. It's Smith tech support. Yeah, that's Smithian as well. Um, theory of moral sentiment is where it came into play. Tech support. If you want to find the origin of the invisible hand, it would be Smith's theory of moral sentiment. Um, and then, uh, an inquiry into the, the wealth, uh, an inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations, of, often abbreviated to Smith's wealth of nations is further investigated in, uh, uh, further elucidates the concept of the invisible hand of the market. But yeah, it's, it's sentiments that has it first. Um, so if you, if you really want to, if you really want to find it, it's Smith, uh, the theory of moral sentiments. Glazy. That's hilarious. Proper grandpa. Group thinks still problematic, I would assume. Yes, yes. The 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 philosophy and ideology that is found upon uh, founded upon the concept of ground up individual autonomy. Really a hierarchically horizontally organized system which requires active uh, part- active uh, um, uh, educated citizenship, people who are members of their society, who vote for themselves and engage for themselves, literal individual autonomy. You got to worry about, the, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm sure we don't have that at all in this current system, right? We're not talking about making improvements because you're seeking perfection, right? God, what fucking bad faith argumentation. Um, Um, it was about exporting wealth by exporting, uh, exporting production. It was, it was more about the, um, the, uh, let do, let go, um, aspect of laissez-faire capitalism. It was more about the, the, the fact that a homeostatic equilibrium will be found within the market forces, uh, if you remove, um, intervening forces. Right. Like if, if you remove the government or um, other intervening methodologies within the uh, within the market forces, that the market forces themselves will seek a homeostatic sort of a homeostasis of them uh, of themselves. And that equilibrium will be found. This is the the let do let go aspect of Smithian economics and Smithian capitalism. And that's the, the shorthand for that is the invisible hand of the market which has come to mean something else entirely these days.
Sorry, Zippy. Um, all right, hold on. Dude, you guys have been fucking dropping shit into... <laughs> oh, I love to see it. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Firearms Policy Coalition. Texas uh, Texas gun rights group sides with the abortion providers in Texas. Because they think that this this is an overreach into in, uh, into no, uh, non-constitutional grounds, and this could be used to backdoor the Second Amendment if it stands in another state. That's fucking hilarious. Oh, it's hard to miss the parallels between abortion and guns, said Jaffa, a former clerk to Clarence Thomas, who's also a part of the team helping defend. Holy shit. If a state can do this here, why can't it do it in other contexts? This includes rules restricting guns, requiring face masks, prohibiting criticism of public officials. Oh, I fucking love it. That's brilliant. Like fucking somebody riled up the gun, gun people. Dude, they're one of the most powerful lobbies in this country. If you want shit done, get the fucking gun, owner, gun owners on your side. Freak them out. That's brilliant. I'm glad somebody fucking called them up. It was like, hey, you know what? Have you considered that a white, uh, a, 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 a women's right to uh, bodily autonomy is constitutionally equivalent to your right to own a gun? And that if Texas can take away her bodily autonomy, they could probably take your gun away. They're taking our guns! Love it. Fucking love it. That's fucking hilarious. Code, code Obama, Code Obama, Code Obama. Uh, it's, yeah, it's not Obama. Code Obama. Code Obama. I fucking love that. That is hilarious, though. Good. Where we get the job done? Y'all know me. I'm I'm Machiavellian in this regard. I don't give a shit. Oops, let me close down media, memes. <sighs> I'm sure they just think it's another Jade Helm. Love it. I mean, we all know who runs the New World Order. Order, The gays do. It's the gays. Dude, the gays... Dude, fucking sodomites caused the collapse of Sodom and Gomorrah, yo. We've been run, running this shit from behind the scenes forever. You should fear us. You should fear us. We control your world. Like, do you understand what 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 we are capable of doing? With the snap of our fingers, we can make your entire society collapse. We've stolen entire segments of concepts of your reality. Naturalistic phenomenon like the rainbow. Ours. The concept of happiness. Gay used to mean happy, yo. 
we took happy from you. Ours. We will steal everything from you. We are behind the Illuminati. We are behind the, uh, by, behind the election. We are behind the capitalist economy. Why do, you think gay, uh, why do you think single gay men have so much money? We're on average wealthier than the cisgendered heterosexual male. We're at the top of the pile, yo. And we're so good about it. We're so good at it that nobody's even noticed. Y'all have been concentrating on Jews and immigrants and fucking just random billionaires and shit. We're literally the puppet masters. We're behind it all. We created the CIA. We created the Freemasons. We created football. You know why locker room behavior is so uh, so homo, uh, homoerotic? You ever been in a locker room? You ever been in the Marines? You notice all that shit's super homoerotic? It's us. We're behind it all. We created your entire reality. We are the puppet masters of this matrix. That's why everything's so fucking gay, yo. Every power dynamic, every place that you go into the halls of power, you start to notice it's really gay around here. Why, why, are, all this, why are all these dudes naked and showering together? Because we wanted it that way. We control your world. Know that. Every last aspect. And just like a lab rat actually running the lab, when you thought you were oppressing us, when you thought you were beating us in the streets, when you thought you were treating us cruelly, we were setting you up again. It was a double bluff. We wanted to create a, a, a victim uh, space for ourselves. We wanted to be seen as the marginalized community. And so we created a circumstance in which you became the oppressor and abuser thus undermining your own position. And you were so foolish, you stepped right into the trap. Without hesitation, without second guessing, you became it because you were ruled by fear and hate and so easily manipulatable. Queer supremacy. We run the world and always have. How's that for an alternate telling of history? <laughs> Clip it and ship it. I know, right? Right? That's what they want, right? That's what they want. This is what they think. This is, so for those of you who don't understand what I just did, I did what these crazy fuckers think we're doing. I did it, right? Like that's, that's what they're about. That's what they're about. When these fuckers talk about the gay mafia, that's what they're talking about. When the fucking Christians start talking about Sodom and Gomorrah and they start talking this QAnon nonsense, this is what they're talking about. They legitimately think there is a global homosexual cabal controlling things behind the scenes. So why not give it to them? Right? Why not give it to them? Yeah, or is he? Akka! 100 biddies for the gay supremacy. Thank you. I don't have the alerts turned back on yet, Akka. But yes, 100 biddies for the gay supremacy. The gay mafia sounds like the most well-dressed mafia in history. Um, uh, 
Burger Man. There's a secret gay organization. They didn't invite me. It, we meet on Fire Island off of the coast of New York every year. You have to attend. <clears throat> Forgot to pay my dues last month. Source, sourcing. <laughs> Thank you for the hundred biddies sourcing. Forgot to pay my dues last month. Um, Weezer. Weezer. Here's what you need to understand about me, right? You can argue against crazy, right? Why bother? Right? Why bother? You can't logic someone out of a position they didn't logic that themselves into. So why would I try? We had a dude in chat. What are we talking about? Like the global homo conspiracy and gay mafia and shit right that, like that, right? So lean into it instead. Right? Like if if they think that you are this like magical force that dates into prehistory, let them. Fuck am I gonna do? Change his mind? Right? Like that's what am I gonna fucking do? So I might as well turn it into a bit. I disagree. Did you believe in Santa as a child? Um, yeah, for a minute. My parents let me. For a minute, my parents let me, but it was over pretty quick. Yeah. You can't use logic where there is none. Like, it, it, it... So, fuck it. I mean, only if I have something to do with it, Big Bear. Um, yeah, like, why would I bother even trying? Why would I try? Fuck it. <laughs> I, 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 I would much rather, are you talking about super homophobes? I don't fuck, if you want to call them super homophobes, I don't fucking give a shit what you call them. Fucking morons who think that queers are behind literally everything. Name it. They see, they see gay mafia conspiracies everywhere they go. Fucking communists and, and homos controlling everything. Obama's gay. Fucking Biden's gay. Hunter Biden secretly gay even though we have fucking video of him banging female prostitutes. Fucking everybody's gay. They're all gay. What the fuck? Who gives a shit, man? Yeah, the Jews did this equals the gays did this. It's the same fucking thing. The, the frogs, they've been gay. All right. I figure you can logic people out of positions they didn't get to with logic, but you have to teach them logic and convince them to apply it. Very minor disagreement. In my opinion. Well, I mean, you know, I don't have time to fucking teach formalized logic, so. <laughs> Fair enough, Zippy. Hmm. Ah, yes. Your your father believes that Michelle Obama is post-op. Yes. Uh, for Toos, thank you for the gift sub to uh, to Cupcake. Uh, for Toos just gifted Cupcake a, a sub. Hey, 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 hey. We, we, we claim the term degenerate around these parts. But fuck them. Degen is ours. We, we like it. We lean into it. I'm proudly a degenerate, um, but you know I figure. All right, I want to I want to finish off this last section of chapter three, y'all, um, so I can I can I can close the book on chapter three this week. Um, that'll be section that'll be chapter two and chapter three done this week, and I don't know if I'll keep going. I don't know what four looks like. Ugh. I may break four up over multiple days. Yeah, I'm going to break four up over multiple days, but I want to get this done, yo. I want to get this done. Well, Zippy, it's it's just extra clutter on the screen. I was going to say, um, I was just going to save it for DGen story time. 
say something degenerate. I don't, I don't fucking know. I should just put a photo from fucking last night on the screen and be done with it and blur out the stuff that needs blurring. Um, something degenerate. Um, I mean, last night I told an hour and 44 minute story of being a sexual submissive slash slave boy to an older gentleman here in town. Right. Like and enjoying every last minute of it. The, the, the more submissive it, it was, the, the more of a turn on it was for me. So, I mean, there there's something degenerate. And this is all after the fact that uh, we, we did a uh, <clears throat> fisting session. So, you know, yeah, there's your degeneracy. Tech support. Thank you for the gift sub tech support. Tech support gift sub to uh, Cricks. Um, so there you go Wither something degenerate. <sighs> All right, let's get this fucking reading done. Um, let's see. All right, let's go back into the anti ancap theory. Public, Jesus Christ, public, thank you for the gift sub as well. Um, public gifted to Corey Haim. Corey, congratulations. Doing a level two capitalism. Is that what we're doing? Well, we completed level one. We're working on level two. Um, you are appeased. All right, Cassidy. I don't approve of that, but all right, Cassidy, take care of yourself. Sleep well. Um, all right, fucking let's finish this theory out. Dude, this is this is just this is one page of reading. This is just one page of reading. I should be able to bang this out in like five minutes le or maybe less. So let me get this done and then I can just close the book on chapter three and get that uploaded. <sighs> what does it matter if Obama is gay? What does it matter if he wants to live with fucking Michelle and be gay at the same time? What does that even matter? Why does that play into the conversation? Then why do you keep bringing it up if it doesn't matter? Anyway, I don't give a shit about you. <sighs> Let me get some water. All right. <clears throat> Chapter 3, Section 2. But what about so-called anarcho-capitalist uh, support for charity? Yes. While being blind to the impact of inequality in terms of economic and social power and influence, might ri oh, most right libertarians do argue that the very poor could depend on charity in their system. But such a recognition of poverty does not reflect an awareness of the need for equality or the impact of inequality on the agreements we make. Quite the reverse, in fact, as the existence of extensive inequality is assumed, after all, in a society of relative equals, would poverty would not exist, nor would charity be needed. Ignoring the fact that their ideology hardly promotes a charitable perspective, let's raise four points. Firstly, charity will not be enough to countermand the existence and impact of vast inequalities of wealth and so power. Secondly, it will be likely that charities will be concerned with improving the moral quality of the poor and so will divide them into the deserving, i.e. obedient, and undeserving, i.e. rebellious poor. Charity will be forthcoming to the former. Those who agree to busybodies sticking their noses into their lives. In this way, charity could become another tool of economic and social power. See Oscar Wilde's The Soul of Man Under Socialism for more on charity. Thirdly, it's unlikely that charity will be able to replace all the social spending conducted by the state. To do so would require a tenfold increase in charitable donations, and given that most right libertarians denounce the government for making them pay taxes to help the poor, it seems unlikely that they will turn around and increase the amount they give. And lastly, charity is an, in, uh, is an implicit recognition that under capitalism, no one has the right to life. It's a privilege you pay for. That in and itself 
is enough to reject the charity option. And of course, in a system designed to secure the life and liberty of each person, how can it be deemed acceptable to leave the life and protection of even one individual to the charitable whims of another? Perhaps it will be argued that individuals have the right to life, but not a right to be a parasite. This ignores the fact that some people cannot work, babies and handicapped people, that in a functioning capitalist economy, many people cannot find work at all times. It is this recognition of that babies cannot work that prompts many right libertarians to turn them into property. Of course, rich folk who have never done a day's work in their lives are never classified as parasites either, even if they did inherit all their money. All things considered, little wonder that Proudhon argued that even charitable institutions serve the ends of those in authority marvelously well. Charity is the strongest chain by which privilege and the government bound to protect them holds down the lower classes. With charity sweeter to the heart of men, more intelligible to the poor man than the obtruse laws of political economy, one may dispense with justice. The idea of the revolution the general idea of the revolution, page 69 to 70. As noted, the right libertarian passing acknowledgement of poverty does not mean that they recognize the existence of market power. They never ask themselves, how can someone be free if their social situation is such they are drowning in a sea of usury and have to sell their labor and so liberty to survive? Three minutes and 49 seconds. I told you I could bang it out in fucking no time. <sighs> All right. Let me turn everything back on. Alerts are going back on. Now we've finished the capitalism. <laughs> Let me turn the, the rate, all this stuff back on. Uh... All right. Make echoes. And we jump over there and jump to the clips page before all that starts playing. All right. So I did that one. Let me download this one. 3.1 and then download this one 3.2 done boom chapter three in the bag y'all that feels good though that feels good though um and you know what I'm going to fucking, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just, I'm going to minimize my post-show workflow here. I'm going to do this fucking right on, right on air. I'm just going to open these and fucking get them uploaded to YouTube. Um, Notepad, Notepad++, plus plus, by the way. Notepad++, plus plus. always Notepad++. Plus plus. All right, so 3.0 was why do anarcho-capitalists place little or no value uh, uh, on equality? Um, where is my description? There's my description. Um, no anarchists, <laughs> no and caps aren't anarchists. Um, recording date was today and publish. Oh, so what am I dealing with in chat? Uh, no plaid plus plus a software. So French, it told the national front to go fuck themselves. Um, yeah, exactly. Public. One of the first comments, do the end caps fucking inhabit YouTube, right? Uh, one of the first comments on one of the first videos I uploaded, I literally have a paper that proves ANCAPs are anarchist. No, no paper, no citation, no link, no title, no, no 
even like reference to maybe a name of the paper. Just, I literally have a paper that proves ANCAPs are anarchists. Right? And then it was, it was just like, well, then thank you. Wow, that was a very uh, excellent argument there. Um, all right, three, three point one. sums up a lot of right-wing arguments. I know, right? I can, it, it was just like, I mean, I wish they had said like public, it was, I'm actually correct and can prove it. It wasn't even, but you aren't worthy of the time to do it. They literally didn't even put that last sentence in. It was just, I'm actually correct and can prove it. What? <laughs> they just fucking left it there. Just fucking, they just trailed off. <laughs> uh. Ta-da. Okay, the first one's almost done uploading. All right, 3.1. Why is this disregard for equality important? Oops, didn't mean to click that. Um, three, one. Playlist, no ANCAPs are an anarchist, show more. According, to, according date was the 27th, next, 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 publish. Close. Oh, I wanted to edit this. This is, it's not three, it's 3.0, I guarantee it. Save that. There we go. Um, God, y'all still playing with him? Good on you for, I suppose your your I don't know, perseverance. I suppose. Um, and then three two. But what about their support for charity? There you go. Um. Yes, the vaccines are the vaccines are globalist. You've never had a vaccination and never will and will never get one. Bullshit. Are you American? You've had vaccine. Did you are you an American and did you go to school ever? Otherwise, bullshit. Bullshit. And if you are completely homeschooled, that explains a lot of stuff, man. That explains a lot of stuff. Oh wow! What a what a what a brilliant comeback! Well, if you say so. Thank you, thank you for answering that question. Were you homeschooled? Did you go to fucking school? Because you were required to have vaccinations to attend school. So either you're lying about not having any vax ever, or you were completely homeschooled. Which again is explains a lot. Oh yeah, public. I'm I'm in that camp too. I'm right I'm right there with you, fuck. Right right there with you, public. I think they're just full of shit, but I mean, you know. Let's see. No, there we go. Show more. Recording date. 27th. Next, 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 publish. Done. Cool. Processing. Oh, that feels good. That 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 feels good. Fucking. Uh, let me see the playlist now. Let's see. What's let me do the math on this one. Um, let me see what we're up to. Four four plus mm-hmm. 
Um, <sighs> plus 20 plus 18 plus let's go at four yep we're over five hours now we're over five hours of just fucking why and caps aren't anarchists absolutely amazing Damn, bruh. I'd be salty if I could get taken out of the game by a rusty staple. Dude, you haven't even had a tetanus fax. Dude, that's fucking rough. Like, if that's the case... <laughs> you're like... You're like... You're like a level one character in a fucking game or some shit, right? Like, don't go into a high, a high level area. That's all I have to say. Like, don't set foot on a construction site. That's... Dude... You're a fucking liability to everywhere you go. That's rough. All right, what is four? What's chapter four look like? Oh, it's the homesteading. It's the Lockean provisor, uh, proviso. It's homesteading, private property st uh, stuff. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Level one and went, I don't need the tutorial. Level one barehanded the death claw mine in New Vegas. Uh, I completely, so yeah, the first time I fucking, I completely did like the standard, um, fallout player thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just travel down the road towards fucking, uh, uh, towards the, the, the casino and you go towards the, the, uh, the, um, new Republic, um, barricade right like normally people would just head down i-15 right that's the old i-15 i fucking go right up over the hill right like no skyrim bitch right like we're going we're going over the fucking hill and of course i end up in the mine right like that's literally my first time playing new vegas is i'm just like fuck this fucking hop 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 oh fuck 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 My first time playing New Vegas. Yeah. Like, I don't need to go where they're telling me. Fucking quest telling, quest marker telling me to go that way. I'm going the other way, bitch. I know how to play video games. I know how this works. Right? Like, I know video game logic. The quest tells me go, go north. I'm going south because south is where the good stuff is. That's where they hide the fucking box. Right? That's where the box good, full of good shit is. Is the fucking... They tell me to go north, but they hide the box full of good shit in the south. Oh, shit. Death Claws. Yeah. Yeah, that was my experience with New Vegas. Oh, fuck Cazadors. Yeah. I kind of want to talk to this person on air. They don't seem like the type to fucking scream gamer words. Yeah, I kind of want to talk to him. Uh, Lennon? Yes. 100%. 100%. New Vegas, best Fallout. Including the OG Fallouts, which set the script in the world building for the Fallout world. I, I, 
I appreciate them, but that, I'm sorry, that fucking click, point and click shit, I, I can't, I can't work with. I can't work with. But New Vegas, best Fallout. Hey, Info Warrior, if you're listening, call into the show. Sorry, nonsense for biting your bit, uh, biting off your bet. Yeah, New Vegas is the best Fallout by miles, by miles. Um, for a multitude of reasons, that's the best part. Is it's it's the best for many reasons, not just like one. Uh, public. I watched. Um, I watched a fucking playthrough of Miniature Nerd John, um, do Fallout One and Two because I love watching him play Fallout. Um, and they're, I, they're just. I mean, you put them up against. You're, you're right. I mean, there's, dude. Some, there's some QOL stuff that needs handled, but like, you know, as far as how they could have aged, yeah, I, I agree. But th th fucking New Vegas is the best. Like, it's just objectively the best. Um, despite its level of jank. I love that he can't spell any of these correctly either. Like, I'm surprised he got zinc correct, but, you know. Quercetin requires an, another E in there, bro. Weezer, we always do. Look, a good chud, a good chud in chat is a little bit of friction, right? If chat is too smooth, then there's no engagement. A little bit of chuttery goes a long ways. I, I've, I've long stated that. It's, it's, it's a worthwhile. It's a worthwhile thing. You probably don't do a lot of things you should probably do, including due diligence, which is that is indicative of. Um... Caboose, I yeah, Project Wasteland, or yeah. Yeah. Here's what, okay, so here's my concern. Here's my one concern. Did they fix, did they patch out, did they mod the fucking um, Fallout 4 abbreviated dialogue tree bullshit? Because that was a huge, that was a big difference between 4 and 3. And, um, and New, I'm sorry, 4 and um, New Vegas. Was New Vegas had a fully fleshed out dialogue tree option set. Whereas 4 used that abbreviated dialogue tree bullshit press X crap. And so like that's that's my major concern. Because if the, the, the beauty of New Vegas is a lot of that storytelling and lore and interaction and dialogue tree work. And four kneecapped that entirely. That would be my concern. Um, but if they modded that out, then fuck it. It's it's uptime. Non binary.
Why do all of the anti-vax people not understand that there's two different classes of COVID vaccine, one of which isn't an mRNA vaccine? It's 9.04 here, non-binary. PM. And yet you don't include it in your argument, which would either say that you're poor at argumentation or you're arguing in some form of bad faith. Either way, look, I've already got your number. I'm not going to fucking engage. Do I consider myself a socialist? No, I consider myself an anarchist. Now, many anarchists fundamentally consider themselves socialist or communist or even syndicalist or communalists or even in some instances primitivists. But my primary focus is that of anarchism. I am here to teach people about the lens of analysis, the philosophical and ideological underpinnings of hierarchical organizational modalities and the philosophical challenges that uh, systems of hierarchy must clear in order to justify themselves. All right, I'm an anarchist, first and foremost. Um, as to what form you take, um, generally I'm a big fan of the saying uh, there is no project of projects. Uh, the core tenet of anarchism, uh, anarchism is, is mutual cooperation arising from individual autonomy, right? What a group of uh, autonomous individuals organize themselves as is left to that group of individuals, right? I can't, uh, I can't predict that. There is no prefigurative version of anarchism. I like Chomsky. I understand people's critiques of Chomsky as well. Um, but I think that the, I think he's been a net positive to society. Yeah. And, and let's face it, if you ever read the stuff that is just like Chomsky's wheelhouse linguistics, it's, it's genius. It's genius. His, his insight into linguistics is he's in that, um, he's in that Marshall McLuhan tier of insight into media analysis, right? Like he truly like he's a genius. There's no getting around that. Um, as to his insights on anarchism, there's some takes that I can leave. There's some takes that I find infinitely valuable. The, the, the fact that Chomsky taught me how to compromise as an anarchist and not forsake my ethics, my philosophical uh, analysis that is a super valuable lesson that I carry forward to this day. Um, beyond that, you know, some of his takes are fucking not that great. Um, his analysis of the Spanish Civil War as, a, as a, one of his pet projects is really valuable to anarchists. He has done more to analyze the anarchist Civil War, uh, the, the, the Spanish Civil War through the lens of an analysis of an anarchist than most people have done. And so it gives us insights into communal operations under high pressure situations and understanding that 50% of agriculture and industry during that time in that region was being produced by anarchistically organized communes, right? Like this is, this is valuable information. So yeah, I think Chomsky has been a net positive um, um, for society and like, yeah, and within his field, he is singular. Right. Like, yeah, like Chomsky is to his field what Gould or Bohr were to their fields like it. He's legitimately as a linguist, he's like I said, McLuhan, right? Like he's in that in that tier. He's he's yeah. So I, you know, yeah, I understand people's critiques of him as well. He said some questionable things in the past, but give if you give a larger context, and you read the entirety of that document, then you understand that it wasn't explicitly stating what people have mischaracterized it that uh, mischaracterized it as stating. Right. So I understand the critiques as well. Um, so there's your answers. There's a fucking bunch of Anders answers. I found him looking for anarchist think thinkers. Um, I would point you in other directions. On Anarchism by Noam Chomsky is a very good, like, baby's first anarchism book. And I don't mean that as in a diminutive or a pejorative way, right? It is a very good, I don't know anything starting position. But I would point you at The Government of No One by Ruth Kinna, K-I-N-N-A. 
um, as a good starting point if you want to know about anarchism, right? Um, property is theft. Now, if we're talking personal property, which there's an economic and legalistic and political science distinction between personal property and usage rights versus private property, um, but I'm coming in from it from a Proudhonian aspect. Private property is theft. It's it's a theft of the commons. It's a theft of common uh, goods, resources, and uh, and usage rights of others. So there you go. Um, personal property, which falls under usage rights, though, is a different uh, topic entirely for anarchists. Uh, what do I think of the conquest of bread? Uh, I have it. I like Kropotkin. Um, I think it's. I think it's foundational text, right? Like this is this is the sort of stuff. If I were recommending, and you, if you knew nothing about anarchism, I'm going to tell you to to read. I'm going to tell you to read the government of no one by the uh, practice and theory and practice of anarchism by Ruth Kenna. Right. This is going to cover more for you than than the bread book ever will. Right. I, I'm going to tell you to start there. Now, if you're interested in that, if you're like, hey, I'm really fucking digging this, right? Then I'm going to tell you to read the uh, Demanding the Impossible, A History of Anarchism by Peter Marshall. All right? If you hit the end of this and you're like, okay, I think I'm in, then I would tell you to go back to the beginning. Because in the Demanding the Impossible, Peter Marshall will cover the... He will cover Kropotkin. He will cover Bakunin. He will cover Stirner. He will cover Watkins. He will cover Goldman. He will cover... Cover... Cover, right? He'll be talking about proto-anarchists. He'll be ta he'll reference Taoism. He'll talk about medieval Christians and that have elements of anarchistic philosophy and thought in it, right? If you hit the end of demanding the impossible and you're like, I'm fucking in, then I would tell you to go back and start reading the classics. That's when you start at square one. You need as a beginner somebody to translate a lot of this for you. You need somebody to interpret, somebody to stand behind, stand between and condense because the classics, right, are going to be a lot. They're going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot to take in, right? And so, and you don't necessarily know contextually how it relates as you move forward because they are locked in a cultural time. So as you read like the... As you read, like the you know, um, the conquest of bread or the conquest of factories, right? As, you, as you're reading these seminal texts, or you know, what is property by Proudhon, right? Like as you're reading these seminal texts, you also have to cross reference those with cultural and historical um, documents, so you understand the context that they sit in. Then, as you condense that down in your brain and you move forward in theory, keep in mind I've been doing this for over a decade, right? I theory alone my direct action and street stuff starts much younger than that um you now need to retie and revisit and go back because you will have forgotten stuff you'll have forgotten reference points and you as you move forward and you start learning the new era but then you're going to have to as you move forward you're going to have to go through like the 1880s to 1920s the labor movement all of this energetic motion you're going to have malatesta and fucking goldman right you're going to you're going to have all of this like revolutionary action you're going to have the the expropriators from uh from south america from chile and argentina that you're going to be reading about you're going to have the italian and in Spanish anarchists. Holy shit, man. Right? Like, you're going to have the propaganda of the deed, which is a whole other thing we don't talk about really on on, TO, uh, on air. It's kind of TOS. Right? And then as you reintegrate all of this stuff into the classics and understand how the classics influence this new era of thought, you're going to move forward into the, the new era of fucking, of like the, the that sort of 1960s America where where the, the hippies and the, the, um, the Black Panthers and um, women's rights and women's, women's liberation and queer liberation start to come and influence and play. And now you're rising into that. You've got ecological anarchism. You've got Bookchin starting to, you know, influence these sorts of things. And then you've got fucking Chomsky on the scene. And now you've got like f fucking French post-structuralists like Foucault influencing anarchistic power dynamic analysis and these sorts of things. And then you move into even forward into like Bob Black and the, the current era of like Michelle Luc Bellamar and Jason McQuinn. 
right? There's still live anarchist theory being written and uh, for the current cultural context of the world, internet and globalism and neoliberalism, right? There's, there's topics and ways of analyzing and looking at, right? So when you go back and you do something like the bread book out of nowhere, it doesn't have the impact that you need it to have. And that's why you need somebody like Ruth Kinna. Um, Mr. I don't know, not my topic. I don't know. Um, that's why you need somebody like Ruth Kinna to explain these aspects and elements of anarchism to you, to give you this broader context. And then if you're curious, you go to somebody like Peter Marshall, who's going to do this deep dive into the history, the people, the topics of anarchism. And then if you truly are curious, if you're truly like, I want my theory head badge, that's when you start and you do what I've just described. And it takes a very long time and a large amount of dedication. <laughs> um, also, it breaks your brain in a lot of ways. Uh, Marcus, while we're talking influential and approachable modern thinkers, I recommend anyone who wants to learn about Christian history and theology, read Bart, uh, Bart er er Ehrman, Ehrman and read the scholars he cites and so on. And thank you for those biddies, Marcus. Um, Non-binary. Yes. Yes. I don't monitor anything, News World. I, I, there's very few things I monitor. <clears throat> Red flag anyone? Red flag anyone? Um, Caboose, I don't understand your boy fucking, um, whatever fucking the, the Sigma grind rat dude. Caboose. I, I don't understand his projects and shit he's constantly on about. Um, but either way. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it either. All right, fair enough. All right, well, then we're both equally confused. So. All right. I feel better about it, then. As long as I'm not the only one. If there's other people besides me confused, I'm perfectly happy to be confused i don't need to understand everything in the world but if i if i'm the only one who doesn't understand it then i'm like wait 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 i need to rectify this but yeah if i can look around and be like do you no i don't all right cool um oh i need to All right, cool. Uh, let me see if the playlist is updated yet. It has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I could have just fucking looked at that. Um, sixteen videos so far in the why and caps aren't uh, why the and caps aren't anarchist series 16 fucking videos not all of them but i mean one of them's fuck almost an hour long unto itself i forget which one that was what fucking segment was that um 1.4 1.4 was fucking 54 minutes long Oh, let's do a comic opera of why the ANCAPs are an anarchist. Oh, God. That would be... 
Am I free to be gay in Russia? As a gay man, how much freedom does Russia have for me? Am I free to walk down the street holding hands with my partner? I don't have one, but am I free to do it? Without getting my ass beat? Because I've got videos of people being assaulted. Two YouTubers, two uh, Russian YouTubers, just did a little social experiment. And they walked down the they tried to walk down the street holding hands. They're not even gay. They just tried to walk down the street holding hands. They literally got assaulted by a dude. Dude came right up and fucking started shoving and pushing them apart and fucking hitting at them. Yeah. They made it minutes before getting assaulted on the streets, uh, on the side of the street. Minutes. Totally free, though. Very free. How about gun rights? Here's an interesting fun fact about Russia. They're not really big on fucking gun rights, either. The, the U.S. is far more liberal in gun rights than Russia is. It's easier to possess a firearm legally in the U.S. than it is in Russia. Yeah. That's weird, right? You'd be like, oh, I thought it was fucking AK-47 on every street corner. You just go pick one up. No. Hunting firearms are with a rifled barrel are eligible to be acquired by citizens of the Russian Federation who have been granted hunting rights in accordance with the established procedure provided they engage in professional activities related to hunting or owning hunting firearms, smoothbore long arms for at least five years. Sporting long-barreled bar firearms with a rifled barrel and cartridges to it, as well as hunting long-barreled rifles, long rifles with a rifle barrel and cartridges to it, are entitled to purchase for sports by citizens of the Federation who are issued with a certificate confirming the sporting title for the kind of sport associated with the use of sports firearms. This is straight out of their fucking... This is Article 13 of the Russian Federation's Arms Act, by the way. Um, <clears throat> how many weapons can a person register? According to usual licenses, you can have up to two, five, and five units respectively. This is, uh, <laughs> yeah, like literally they, they, they place, they place limits on who can own them. They place limits on how many you can own. They place restrictions on a uh, certification process for obtaining them. All right, so less firearms freedom in Russia, less identity freedom in Russia, less freedom of the press in Russia. I'm just saying, like, how, how free is Russia, really, at the end of the day? By the, the, the standard conservative metric of freedom for America, how free is Russia? Not very free. What do you mean here? Info, You're here for you is Russia, right? So there's freedom of the press here? Where's here? That's a personalized usage there. Here. Here for you is Russia. Right? Because that's where you said you are. Having lived with a member of Pussy Riot, respect, I know what it's like anecdotally. The anti-LGBTQ propaganda law means that as a lesbian couple, you can't be open with your kids as simply sitting at breakfast with your partner is seen as an act of propaganda and child abuse. P Putin's a short little bitch who's a fucking, who's a little bitch of a man. Straight up. In any sort of street fight, Putin would fucking end up dead. Putin needs his security forces because he's a little pussy. 
all those dictator types are pussies. They're all fucking punk bitches. They stand behind an army because, let's face it, if he went out on the street without his security forces, he'd be dead. Any random person on the street could punch Putin to death. And they probably would, quite frankly. Given that he spent how many billion on his, his palace? Right? I mean, we could talk Clinton-level corruption, right? Clintons have probably scammed a couple hundred million out of this country, right? What do, what do we want to talk? Maybe 250? What's Pelosi managed to scam? 250, 350, right? McConnell's probably like in the same camp, like 100 million territory. Putin's managed to scam billions out of the Russian government and the out of the, the taxpayers' coffers. Holy shit, man. That's a whole other level of grift. That's a whole other level of grift. And he has man tits, by the way. Let's just let's just talk about that, right? He's got man tits. Not a good look. Not a good look. Yeah. I mean... Boobs. He has soft hands and smells like cabbage. I like, yeah. As far as I can see, I, I don't I don't know where the argument is. Fucking Russia's better. How? How? I'm not gonna argue it's necessarily worse, but I'm gonna fucking like how is it better? Like in what way is Russia better? Oh, sh fuck you. Fuck you for arguing about it. Oh, had to go take a piss. What? I'm done. I'm done. No more interaction for you. Um... Oh, you know what, though? While we're at it, let's show the... the let's show the image that's illegal to show. Speaking of freedom, it is literally illegal to show this image on social media in Russia. It is quite literally illegal to show this image on social media in Russia. And yeah, I know what this is. Aka, while we're at it. Cabbage, cabbage, cabbage. Lettuce, lettuce, lettuce! Um, oh, hang on. While we're doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am gay, gay, gay. I like long big cocks. I am a super, super gay. I like long big now, once again, I would like to make this very clear. I am gay, gay, gay. I like long big cocks. I am a super, super gay. I like long big cocks. Thank you for your attention, and I hope for your support. Of course, we know that Weezer. Place is a shithole, but it's fucking not a fucking backwoods despot run, a run like shithole like Russia. Yeah, this is freedom, right? Like the ability to make that video, upload it, and fucking make fun of your leadership like that is is an element of freedom that is necessary. In Russia, they don't have that. It's illegal. Like. Also, it may get you killed. Like, 
two to the back of the head and you zip yourself into a duffel bag, toss yourself down an elevator shaft and then over a bridge into a river style suicide. Yeah. Shit happens, yo. Oh, you did? Oh yeah, you did. The New World Order sends its regards. Hmm. Why does this tea taste like ricin? Ricin. Yeah. Um, let's see. So we talked about that. We talked about that. You know. Um. Oh, the good old unintentional suicide. <laughs> yep. List of journalists killed in Russia. It does get you killed. When you have to break it up by years. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. Hold on. We're just gonna we're gonna start scrolling. Alright, alright, so here's here's incidents and names. <laughs> when you when you're like, hey, what's the, let's get a list of journalists mur murdered by the by the authoritarian government. We're gonna need to break it up into years, yo. What? Yeah, we need to break it up into years. <sighs> oh lord. Probably. I don't fucking know, Corey. Maybe. Maybe. They have they kill more journalists annually than they have holidays. <laughs> I mean it kinda is a national pastime for them at this point. Fair enough, Aqua. Uh, aqua. Aka. The food in Russia sucked. I survived a summer in Russia on bread, butter, sugar, and Russian Pepsi. <laughs> it's not even their own Pepsi. It's just Pepsi. It's fucking just, it's made locally, but I mean, we, sh we ship the, the um, syrup and then they just bottle it locally. Fuck it. <laughs> Aka. Um... Oh. All right. I survived a summer in Texas on fruity pebbles and frozen yogurt. Um, not a flex, but I've known two Russian journalists murdered. They were assassinated in their homes by masked gunmen. I mean, non-binary, like I've said before, like I've got stories from the anarchist milieu and... In, in America, you know, no, nobody like that. Nothing like that rises to that tier, but you know, I've known people pros like unduly prosecuted and held for like a year and a half because of a book they had in their house. Shit like that. Like definite, definite miscarriages of justice, definite authoritarian bullshit, definite, like, you know, um, persecution of anarchists for their beliefs. Um, but yeah, I haven't known anybody assassinated. Like, outright. Upward bound math and science camp in the University of North Texas in Denton. Ah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, no, I get it, non-binary. I get it. The cafeteria was too crowded for me to get real food on the twenty minute in the twenty minutes I had available. Oh fucking hey. I survived on um basically like ranch and french fries and tater tots through most of high school. Like that's what I that's all I would eat in the cafeteria. Dude, the food was disgusting. Right? Um, but you know, yeah, and as soon as school got out, food from somewhere else. Yeah. Like just starving and my, my folks were always like, oh, well, you know, he's a growing boy. He's hungry. And it's like, it never clicked that like, I never explained it to him. Like, yeah, I don't eat fucking like a proper lunch at school because we don't have a proper lunch. Shit is dog shit, yo. It was, it was disgusting. You brought rice in a Ziploc bag. Yeah, it was fucking, it was awful. Like, I didn't want to eat that shit. I grew up on like, I mean, I've, we've talked about where I grew up and how I grew up, right? Like, I grew up with real food. Like, real proper food. Organic gardens in the middle of Vermont with our own greenhouse and fucking acres of garden and shit like that, right? Arizona public school lunch. Trust me, it was bad. In high school, all I ate was uh, bagels with cream cheese and hot Cheetos or the occasional chicken patties on campus. It's better than what I was eating, fucking Libra. I lived off croissant sandwiches for two months. When I tried eating from the cafeteria again, it was so goddamn greasy it made me nauseated. Mister, currently sur sur surviving on stolen food from the taqueria, taqueria where I work. Um, I'm vegan. I had no school lunches. Nope, that wouldn't have counted. You could have eaten the fries in my school, I think. Maybe non-binary? Maybe? They may have been, like, soaked in lard or some shit, too. I don't fucking know. I mean, I don't know about ours non-binary i don't i don't fucking know our ours seemed so cheap that it was probably like some sort of like rapeseed oil or something like that like beef fat would have been more expensive than the rapeseed oil so like you may have been able to eat our french fries i had a big bet i had a bag of potato chips for the first time in months it made me feel like shit caboose it's just you gotta you gotta stick to it yeah we legit do dead drops fuck management fucking respect man um i almost i almost always just chose the pizza slice option yeah even our pizza was dog shit oh my god rev yeah 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 that's fucking awful rev i actually ran low on meal tickets halfway through the semester wound up rationing one meal every two days it's amazing how much your stomach can shrink. Oh, and that's totally condu conducive towards a student learning, right? A, a young person who is literally starving is in optimum condition to learn for sure. If I squeezed a slice of cafeteria pizza in college, I'd get two ounces of grease. I... I I didn't eat any food like from university or college, right? Like I didn't, that wasn't, I wasn't eating their food. By that point, like once I was able to like get off campus, I like, I'm, that's not a thing I was doing. I didn't live on campus either. So that wasn't a thing for me. Um, yeah, I didn't eat any of that fucking food. Um, but high school I ate like, I mean, like I said, Tater tots, french fries, and ranch. The really runny, watered-down ranch. It's basically my diet through all of high school. Well, except, like I said, as soon as, as, school, as soon as school got out, take me somewhere. I'm fucking hungry. Like, I'm starving. <laughs> Good 
Good luck, Karina. Good luck. Jack in the Box Ranch. Thinner than that. Mister. Thinner than that. Yeah. Yeah, ostensibly, that's why my grades dropped below the threshold of my honor scholarship and I lost all my fin financial aid. I swear to God. Fucking a rap. That's... I, I don't... Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> oh, Jesus, non by God damn. shit's broken this shit's so broken this shit is so broken fucking non-binary fucking dealing with parents who didn't even give them f give them food for fucking a week rev over here losing 50 pounds in three months uh caboose I would have to say UNLV's fucking food is actually fairly top notch. We the UNLV has a food and beverage course. Basically, um, hotel hotel management and food and beverage are, I mean, the foundation of Las Vegas, right? And so the food and beverage, the culinary program at UNLV is top fucking notch. It's top shelf. So fair fair play. It's just you know by that point. I'm good. Um, but yeah, some of these motherfuckers, holy shit, man. That's that's fucking rough. Yeah, right, public? Just fucking holy shit, just tragedy after tragedy. Um Good job, Corey. Good just good fucking job, Corey. That's all I got for you. Good job. Alright. Oh Jesus Christ. Oop, little pinch in the fucking pants. I swear to God. Um Had to go and fucking injure myself. Yeah, J Jay, I'm I'm in that camp. I didn't eat like like I said, high school I was subjected to that food, but after that, I didn't put up with that shit. I I'm choosing my own food. Go fuck yourself. You're not serving me shit. I'm picking what I want to eat. Um. Um. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll raid over to Radhom. Um, I gotta get some food in me and then deal with fucking this shit tonight. I'll have a story for you guys tomorrow. It's not gonna be as interesting as it was gonna be due to the recent um, <clears throat> pinchiness in the pants, as I'm calling it at this point. Um, but I'll have a story for sure. Um, so Thursday night's gonna have another D-Gen story time. So do I, Akka. So do I. Um, let's just put it that way for sure. Everybody else, thanks for fucking hanging out. Thanks for your time. Thanks for, you know, listening. Thanks for putting up with the theory reads. Um, but, yeah, let's go say hi to Rad Home And let me get on with this fucking night. Let me get some real food in my stomach now that we've been talking about food. Um, 